Ladies and gentlemen, it is Tuesday night and it's Knucklehead Comics in the building and we have the legendary writers and creatives of the X-Men animated series, Eric and Julia Lewall. Le- 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 I- Lee Wall. Lee Wall. There you go. That's why we have Camp here. He's our information man. Appreciate you guys coming on the show. Thank you for being here. Very excited. Very excited. How are you guys doing today? Having a grand time. The, the just the intro alone was was very funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, we we like to have fun with the, with these shows. You know, our, our guy Pro, he's in the chat right now. He's the one that made the intro for us. You know, thank him. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. He, he he done a wonderful job. And now, uh, yo, like I said, very excited to have you guys here. I'm I'm a little nervous. I'll there's gonna be right there's gonna here. be a lot of nerves. I'm probably yes. gonna say thank you about 35 <laughs> times this show. Yes, it's I just it. I love it more. There's gonna be a, <laughs> a, lot, of, be a lot of geeking <laughs> out, a lot oh, of yeah. out, you know. So get ready, it's gonna happen. Yeah. Yes. Now a little fun fact: I didn't grow up reading comics, but everything I learned from the X Men came from your show. So you know, like I I grew up the Phoenix Saga was. Real, like no one ever did the Phoenix Saga as good as y'all, and I'll Absolutely. fight anybody for it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? well, I can jump in here and, and again shut me off if if you need to, but go in the Wayback Machine to the year 1992. There was some families had VCR machines; that was a big deal, but there was no internet, there was no Google. Comic book shops were off, you know, by themselves in the corner. There've been no X Men movies. There've been no, no X Men movies. Mm-mm, none of that. And one of the things we can talk about is that when Eric got tapped to develop X Men comic books into a series, the the president of Fox Kids, Margaret Lesh, all yes. credit to her because she's the one who made all of this happen, including Batman the animated series and Spider Man and Spider Man. T- all of that. That's on. That's her. all on her. But she had been trying for because she'd worked for Marvel to get a show on the air for 10 years, ABC, NBC, CBS wouldn't. They just said, the comic book stuff's not going to work with American kids. They're not going to get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, now, wow. This, yeah. This, this, yeah. This, 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 she said, I can guarantee you, because it was the biggest selling book. She said, I can guarantee you how many. You know, a million. A million. And they all said, well, that's, that's comic books on TV. We need three. So when she became the president of Fox Kids, one of the things she said to Eric was, you need to understand 85% of the country won't know who the X-Men are. And you got to introduce them fast and you got to explain it quickly. And be real clear and not confuse everybody because there's a bunch of new people. It's a weird new world. Mutants, I don't Actually, know, you know, superpowers like that. I... But but so, that's that's how different it was yeah. 30 years ago when we were asked to do this thing. It was just now the, the artists that were on the show that were reading the comics since <laughs> since they were little kids. And yeah. they they knew that we had this gem here. And they just looked at us and said, just don't screw it up. <laughs> Please, God. I've done the Marvel stuff before. Just don't screw it up. <laughs> so, so, so speaking of that, uh, I'll go into uh, uh, my first question. So, I mean, for comic book fans, all different ages, all different shapes and sizes from all different regions of the world, X-Men, the animated series, is the definitive X-Men experience, right? <laughs> How does it? Like, how, how does that feel to just be a part of that? And and going to the Comic-Cons and talking about it, like, elaborate a little on that, please. Well, if, if you can believe it, when when, when we, I, I was a writer on X-Men, the animated series, and wrote on a bunch of other shows as an animation writer. Eric was what I officially call the uh, developed for television by guy. His name appears on every single episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, every script ran through yeah, him. Right. Uh, but, but, um, Good Lord, I lost my complete train yeah. of thought there. <laughs> you asked me how it's called the Comic Con. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, because guys, we we it's just we've done worked on dozens of different shows, and some mm. of you guys have seems like you've watched every one <laughs> Bless over, you. over over thirty some years. It, man, mm. it, was, it was our day job. We're calling you from our home office. Yeah. this is where we've we, been. We, we, you know, we 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 laid out the first season of X Men on our dining room table. Mm-hmm. That's how elaborate and, <laughs> it, and weird it was. So to us, primitive, we're, we're just we're just shoving the scripts at the artists, and they're drawing them as fast as they can, and it's a kind of a low budget deal and so we're getting them overseas and getting them animated as fast as we can so when we're doing it it feels like the best thing we've ever been part of but oh. you never know you can do a real good job and it 
if it doesn't catch the audience, it just becomes a failure and you just go on the next one and hope for better. Mm-hmm. So we finished this up in about in July and it's mm. supposed to come out in the fall it didn't really come out till January to January <laughs> and, uh, yeah, yeah. And, so, and, and so we weren't like we're let go and we went on to another job didn't know if it was going to even if it was going to be a success or not and yeah. so uh, so okay it hits real big and we come back we, then we got some idea that hey you know the people all over the country maybe all over the world starting to watch this we got a little sense of that the ratings were very strong fox kids but, was really pleased but we didn't but, know but we got but it's like we're not like this you know if you're if you're a uh a, a vo- oh. uh, if you're a rock musician or a live wrestler or whatever and you and you got fifty thousand people screaming and yelling because they're enjoying your work mm-hmm. that's immediate you get it oh okay i'm doing all right i connected but we're just writing the scripts in our office and handing them off. There was no, until we would start going to Comic-Con. Five years ago. Five years ago we with had that not first book. Before then. We didn't, and we go to Comic-Cons, there'd be hundreds and hundreds of people. This is 25 years after the show was done. Mm-hmm. Hundreds and hundreds of people dressed up as a character still. Yeah. And wanted to talk to us about the show and, tell us, and giving us all this endless love. And so, oh, we, we really had no appreciation yeah. For how big a thing, how many hundreds of millions of people saw this thing. But but to Cabs's point, and I just want to um, sort of reiterate that Fox Kids the '90s was a golden golden age, yeah. and we yes. were uh, sort of friendly. We knew everyone working on the Batman series, and I was going to say that, yeah. Batman has always had and deserves the full support of Warner Brothers Studio and and DC Comics. God bless X Men, but Marvel was falling apart financially. Yeah. They were selling off rights right and left. So while Batman deservedly so has had 30 years of, of, of recognition and, you know, and support and support, X-Men didn't have that. And until I started poking you around the 25th anniversary of the show saying, if we don't tell a story about this, there's mm-hmm. no one going to do it. Write right. the book. And, yeah. and so Eric did. Eric wrote a book and yeah. that got us an entree into going to cons. And that was our first taste five yeah. years ago that there were fans yeah. out there. And, and even think about the voice talent. People don't know what they look like. It's not like yeah. if you're Hugh Jackman, everybody gets, oh, hey, yeah. the face. But the <laughs> guy, our guy that created the voice back in 92, Cal Dodd. Cal Dodd. Until we started asking cons to bring them on. And because none of them had been to a con until about three, four years ago. Because they're they, all in Canada. They all live up in Canada. Yeah. That's where yep. it's they're all from yeah. Toronto, and, mm. and those just you know <laughs> nobody knew them, and they they didn't know there were you know hundred million fans out there. They, but then that started. Then they started guess. Oh, okay. Mm. It's like every other person you bump into knows the show. And yeah, that was it was a real revelation to us. Yeah, and the voices. Listen, I'm not going to argue about Hugh Jackman, but I'll tell you <laughs> the, when, I, when I see Wolverine, an image of Wolverine, I hear Hugh, Cal Dodd. Yes, yes. 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 I was just I about to say that, that when I for Jean Grey yeah, for, Dark, yeah, for Phoenix when, Dark, I, when I read I the comic books, those yeah. yeah, those are the voices yeah. I hear right away when I read the comic books. Those like it's like Batman, the uh, fortune with Kevin Conroy, rest his soul. Yeah, um, with him, it's the same thing. Like that Wolverine is what I hear, or that or that Cyclops or that Nightcrawler or that Professor Xavier. Oh. Same thing, you know. It's like it correlates. You know what I mean? You yeah. Know? Oh yeah. yeah. And and that was some dumb luck too, because uh, oh, Lloyd yeah. had it. Shut us up when you want to. No, 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 please, no, no, please, please, please. But, yeah. But, but, but we were doing this weird new thing that that and and the, all the executives are getting pushed back on it. We're backing this up and ninety two, yeah, ninety two. But people, There's people that are putting set. money into the show, or, or you know, the advertisers, or people that had television uh, stations all across the nation, we're starting to look, seeing early scripts and things. What? The hell are you guys doing? Kids aren't going to watch this. This is some adult. So I'm, glad, I'm glad you said that. I'm glad you said that, right? So you mentioned Batman, and Batman yes. was already, you know, a success with its darker tone and some more grown up situations. And obviously, the way Bruce and Batman came to be. Now, X Men was dealing with some completely different and more sensitive topics, I would say. You guys were doing inclusion before inclusion was cool, right? Yeah. So, you know, how important was it to get that out there and most importantly, get it correct as you guys did? Yeah, well, that, that was, it was, it was, yeah, it was, it was weird. What, what happened was 
everybody kind of just threw in and had each other's <laughs> back. There were, if you read my, if you read my stupid book, there's like seven, or, book. there's seven or eight times lovely book. where it's it could have all just fallen apart. <laughs> where we could have, because we've been on other shows where we try to do something this serious or half this serious, and you know you get pushed back and say no, it's for little kids. Thumb it down, take all the, all these big words out. Yeah. You have had those meetings. Take all the big words out. Yeah. You know, and, and we fight and fight, and then our boss will look at us and say, yeah, well, it's their money, so, you know. All, and it's up, always their shut money. Shut up and do it. Okay. Yeah. In this case, the executives back this up all the way, and we go to them with a question that's just make it even more intense. Yeah. So for the one time in our lives, we're really thankful. All the executives at Fox were amazing. Yeah. And all the – and so – Starting with Margaret Lesh. Yeah, yeah. Starting and and, and so – as far as getting it right, in the end, uh, we all looked at each other and just said, we're writing this for ourselves. If we go down in flames, flames <laughs> and this this is only one season, and we, because I say, we all wrote it and, and drew it, and all, everybody was let go to we go work on go. something else while we waited for it to be animated because they didn't want to keep us on salary. Yeah. Well, we just thought, okay, well, we don't know if people are going to like it, but this is a show we want to do for our, we're all about 30 at the time. Mm -hmm. And this is what we want to do for our audience. And this is, we're writing the stories for ourselves and we want to be true. But, and also, I mean, you have these serious comic books behind you. Yeah. If it was something else, you couldn't have argued as hard with people about keeping it intense and keeping it adult. But the comics were already, you know, Chris Claremont and these people. Oh my God. They already were writing intense right stuff. There. So, <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so we had that as a, as kind of as a backup, but that doesn't guarantee you anything. We had, uh, we had a show at Hanna Barbera worked on Popeye and Son, where yeah. the yeah. network walked when we, we they sold the idea and we went to him and said, okay, let's let's get this done. He said, well, first of all, you can't have Popeye and, and Bluto hitting each other. <laughs> why, why are we doing Popeye if they're not hitting each other? <laughs> for, <laughs> for real, that's <laughs> the point right now. there. Yeah. But in, in this one case, everybody on the creative side and everybody on the executive side would pull in the same direction. I get some heavy headwinds, wanting to simplify it, wanting it to be like more like other cartoons, and somehow held it together. And so suddenly, when it's, when it's successful, after you know two weeks on the air, and everybody says he's the ratings are high, everybody else shuts up. <laughs> <laughs> and so for the next for the next four years, we don't have any pushback at all. We just ah. write what we want. About. But that first year was hard. And I want again, he wasn't kidding. It was our dining room table, you and your head writer, Mark Edens. Right. Margaret Lesh, I keep bringing her name up, but as a new president of Fox Kids, as a new network, she had a boss and she went to the boss and said, Edict, Batman and X Men, I want to do X Men. And he goes, X Men, no one knows what it is. It's not going to work. And it's too adult. It's too adult. I don't get it. She said, he said, Do you want to risk your job? And she said, Give me, give me one season. And if it goes out and goes down, I'm out of here. And she put her job on the wow. line. So wow. you and Mark were told you have 13 episodes wow. only. Only 13 episodes. Make them, make them, make, make them pay. And me as a writer, you know, going well. I, I just came off of Chippendales Rescue Rangers. Okay, what, are we doing here? And go, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I we, love that we, show. We met at Disney. It's just, it's a, you know, it's a different world. But you want to be true to the source yes. material. Yes. And we were told yeah. you, you don't write down. You write up. You think of this as an as an hour long prime time drama. It happens to be half hour animated Saturday yes. morning. Wow. That's the only yeah. thing we've been told that. And and I'm hearing from you guys. It sounds like we were able to hit that as best we oh, could. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, 13 episodes, one and done. So you we, crafted we, those 13 to be the whole story. And then with luck, the ratings came in as strong as they did. And and boy, that was good. We had two little babies at the <laughs> time, <laughs> and that meant that meant like a couple of years of guaranteed income. Yeah, in yeah. our yeah. Yeah. yeah, in the free so, market, um, but, There's a question in the chat, and I kind of like want to. Go off sure. that question in the chat. It's a question for Julia. Is uh, uh, did you have a favorite character to write about? Oh, well, just I want to I want to hop on with that. Is is there a character that you related to more than the other characters as you're writing for them? Each one of you, like, is there a character you looked at and you was like, I completely understand this character, and there's another one you were like, I don't get it. <laughs> you know what? I'm I'm gonna. It's gonna be the same answer, I think, and it's just because. The backstory here, I was a I'm older and I was a very geeky girl growing up in Texas with a with a black and white TV with a antenna made out of a coat hanger yeah. <laughs> trying to watch 
Star Trek on UHF, you know. <laughs> so, so Star Trek was my oh my god, I I see a war, I see this, I get this. These are my people in Star Trek. Mm -hmm. Fast forward 35 years on X Men, and I adore Beast. Beast uh -huh. is the smartest guy in the room. 25 years. 25. Thank you. Uh, smartest <laughs> guy in the room. Uh, he he's he's the most intellectual he is the most i we, we tease each other oh he's a damaged poet you know because we girls mm -hmm. like the damaged poet you know <laughs> but he, but he he is and he was and people it comes up a lot saying oh you know because the x-men the, the main team any one of them could walk down the street and you wouldn't oh just they could just pass they could they pass, could pass as, yeah. as no problem the beast, beast is cannot. weird looking. Yeah. He and yet he's at ease with that. So it's very, that was very cool. Yeah. So, but then and as a writer, it's like in the first, in the pilot episode, you came up with the idea of a beast call to action when it's time for them to charge. And instead, instead, of, instead of Kawabanga, come up with some obscure line, line of poetry that nobody's ever heard before. And <laughs> it's just as a gag. And the writers all liked oh it God, and Marvel it liked it. So we kept on jack cranking them out. But there was no Google. So we were using <laughs> Bartlett's quotations. Must be old books. We find beast parts. We find out beast each other if we had them in a script, you know. Yeah. So oh, it was like, oh, that's I get to be the smartest person in the room if I'm writing beast yeah. because he yeah. is the smartest person and, in the and, room. And for me, for me, it's I mean, a lot of people when we go to cons, who's your favorite character? And it's usually Wolverine or Gambit or Rogue or Storm. Those are kind of you know the really way up there. Um, that usually get voted for it. And the guy that I felt closest to empathized most with, most with of all the ones was for, was Xavier, because I was, I was in charge over the five years. <laughs> there were 20 different people that wrote for those 76 episodes, including, including her and all very different, all these writers with different sensibilities and different ideas about what the show should be. And, and I was trying to kind of herd them together and, and keep mm -hmm. everything smooth so that it all, kind of made sense as one show and so i felt kind of like the father like xavier trying to keep the x-men together all their bickering and yelling at each other and and getting you know getting on each other's back all the time so very much empathized with him okay and and the the the, the very unique thing that i liked about the show was that every character was their own individual character mm -hmm. yes. you know how sometimes in in cartoons the back, you know, the back characters get lost in the shuffle and they're just generic. A mm. lot of these characters, even if they were on for like five minutes, were their own individual people. And yeah. I really like that because it it shows that even though you could be a part of the team, you still can, you know, stand up and be your own person. Yeah. You, you know, have, um, on the writing side of things, yeah. uh, an analogy that just <laughs> kills me. But again, we met at Disney working on Chippendale's Rescue Rangers and Goof Troop and all those shows. And each character. Great show, by the way. Great show. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. If you're if, if you're lucky writing on a show, each character has enough of a distinct voice that no other character could technically say that and make it make it work. Yeah, yeah. We we re we really worked hard at that because we absolutely believe firmly that that the best shows have these completely different people. Mm -hmm. I mean, each of the friends is very different, and the one well to get the attention of executives say on a new show that don't quite understand the need for this for keeping everybody completely d different I, I i it's it's a uh it's it's the winnie the pooh sex in the city issue is what i told him because <laughs> every character in winnie the pooh is really different Tigger yeah. would never say a line yeah. like piglet would say Pooh would never say a line like owl would say you know them too they're three-dimensional characters that are completely distinct from each other the same i mean sex in the city is always are you a miranda are you a Samantha? <laughs> yeah, <Samantha. laughs> yeah. yeah, and so there's four completely very different women who are having to be friends, but and so that we I'd always use that with executives to kind of get their attention. Okay, Sex in the City with Winnie the Pooh, great, but that that was a big deal when we were deciding who the team was going to be. Oh yeah, at the beginning they gave us four or five that they really wanted in there, including uh, I, we needed one. Uh, uh, you know, Jubilee to be, you know, we needed a young person, we needed Xavier because he's mm -hmm. the head of the group, and Wolverine was a done deal. But, you know, Beast was originally written as a secondary character. Yeah. That's why we put him in jail in episode two. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and we just thought, well, maybe he'll come in, but he's such a different character. Like Spock is different in. Oh, Star yeah. 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 Uh, that he kept, we kept on all the writers as they're going through their story. <laughs> so, but, but Beast would be perfect here. 
So we kept on writing him in. By the end of the first season, he was he was he was uh, mandatory mandatory mm -hmm. uh, lead. So mm -hmm. they kind of asserted themselves, and uh, that was that was one of our proudest things for the show because you know some of us on a lot of us on the writing side didn't know the books that well. We knew don't we, tell anyone. We knew the. the <laughs> We the knew secret the, tape for us. The <laughs> issues, we knew the issues involved. We knew what it meant to be a mutant was a big deal, but we didn't know thirty years of story of canon. Oh, we didn't know the sure, stories. Man. So what we were just working the hardest at was to make the characters clear and make each of these. We would start with what's an intense rogue story. Mm -hmm. Well, what if she could give up her mutancy? She'd what, be the one who yeah, wanted to. Because yeah, the well, touching. Yeah. Yes. That's mm -hmm. the intense, you know, mm -hmm. racial connection about this. What if I could, you know, what if I could stop being a minority? What yeah, would I give up yeah. my life and my culture and my my personhood mm -hmm. for that? And she was given that opportunity and she almost took it and it yeah. was a scam. But, you know, there's a reason. I mean, if you could never touch anybody. Mm -hmm. She's you, the one to explore that yeah. issue with. And, because yes. if, if, if Rogue and Wolverine could swap their powers, Rogue yeah. would be thrilled because she <laughs> Claws unless she needed to, and she could touch somebody. She could heal, and Wolverine would just go off in the woods somewhere. And, and he wouldn't care. <laughs> but the very thing that each made them so distinct, their own mutation that made them so important to the team, was for each of them their their deepest sorrow on the inside. Yeah, yeah. You know, but, it, but yeah, but you're right about the, you're right about the character distinction. That was yeah. like that was job one. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's funny you, you and, say that, and you lead in, and literally to my next question is. I read the comics pretty much my whole life, and I was never a big fan of two characters. I was oh, a big boy. fan of Gambit or Rogue. Yet yeah, when I see the animation, I start to sympathize with both characters. You know, and mm -hmm. I, I sympathize with Rogue in a sense, but more with Gambit is a it's the, the scoundrel turned hero. You know, yeah, kind of yeah. like the the thief. All of a sudden, you're like, I understand why he did that, but now his skill sets are for good. And that yeah. episode that they had where it was concentrated on him when he went yeah. down to the oh. bayou and everything. Yeah. Is it we, my, we, we all reference it all the time, especially me and my friends. Um, it's a sense of understanding a very mysterious character, and then you really get why he is the way he is. And yeah. I think at the end of it, um, towards it, I think Gene Gray said it best like, the sides of us, we all hide, you know, yeah. so the, you know, so people won't know. And yeah. but all of a sudden, now you know everything about uh, Gambit for the most part. Like everything's out there for him playing sight. And I think that's one of my favorite things that I started to love characters that I never thought I would oh. like Gambit and Beast and Rogue. I'm like, I've never been a fan of those. All of a sudden, yeah. I'm like, I want more of them all the time. But the fact that we could have that kind of exploration of 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 a character that that truly, you know, Gambit, we. You don't necessarily know if you can trust him. I mean, he comes yeah. through, but he legitimately might mm -hmm. not. You know, and that mm -hmm. that was that was a different kind of thing for a kid's Saturday morning show. Yeah, because because we you know, we get a lot of pressure from various less enlightened folks in in our business that just said, "Oh, you know, children need clarity. You got yeah. good guys, you got bad guys. None of this, mm -hmm. you know, torture the hero or <laughs> or kind of kind of good some days villain. They need you know they need black and white. They need." To, and it's just, it's so annoying because I don't know where they learned this stuff, you know, or, or what, what they, but at, it may affect toy sales somewhere down the line, you know. That's always what it's all about. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Toys. It's always about the toys. Oh my God. <laughs> but, but in terms of writing the stories, you want to have tort, you, you want to have gray areas and yes. you want to have exact, one of my two or three favorite things about the whole series is Xavier and Magneto's. Xavier oh. and Magneto's relationship. Yes. 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 The, two, yes. The, two, the two most powerful adversaries in the whole world, and they're their closest friends. It's a bromance. They're in love with each other. Yeah. But they each have a legitimate point of view that yes. Absolutely. they each are yeah. on, legitimately on opposite sides of, yeah. of the, the mutant human. How is this going to work together kind of thing, which is, again, a huge and they got too discussion. Much, and they got too much yeah. integrity to back down. Yeah. Yeah. They, 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 yeah. yeah. I often compare them to like a Malcolm X and Martin Luther King. Oh yeah, you know, like that dynamic. You know, because they they they're fighting the same war, it's just the different ways. You know, I think it was I I point often to um, if you guys can remember the the opening pilot, the two parter, nine the Sentinels. Yes, and it, yes. it opens with the introduction of all the X Men, but you, R.I.P. Morph. Yeah, uh, uh, oh, well, <laughs> we, 
we need to talk about more. But okay. we do. <laughs> oh, we will. We will. Because you know, the introduction was not. I'm the big, you know, tough mutant. I'm coming down to fight all you good mutants. No, the introduction was a covert sure. government agency has crafted these sentinels mm -hmm. that are there to protect you humans. Sure. They're only there to protect the humans. What could possibly go wrong? Yeah. But then we see the sentinels going after the mutants. We see what they can do to the mutants. And that by the time you introduce Magneto into the conversation, which happens in episode three. There's great sympathy for mutants in general. So yes. you can have sympathy for a quote unquote mutant villain. Yeah. yeah. So and it, that was that was a big deal to us because yeah, yeah. We, we thought the most important stuff in all the books, because some of the books were just, you know, I'm a massive good guy, I'm a massive bad guy. Let's beat the hell out of each other for 10 pages on an island until the island <laughs> blows up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's wonderful when you're eight years old and and you know it's fun reading, yeah. but telling half hour stories that way. That just kind of gets old. I mean, it's kind of like gun, we talked about. It, it's like gunfights in uh, in westerns. You need them, mm -hmm. but the best westerns are about the characters, yes. about mm -hmm. them struggling. Yeah. So, so it so we set up the characters first and set up the problem of mutancy in a an oppressively majority world that hasn't like, that's afraid of them for good reason. For good reason, and they can do some weird and, and, crap and, and doesn't accept them. <laughs> And had that be the main thrust, and the other stuff came, you know, the other stuff came after organically. Yeah, but that was that we felt that was the most important because you know we worked on other stuff that that didn't quite have the depth. Like you know, it was, I mean, it's fun. It's fun writing those shows. Like yeah. you know, we did the first season of Street. Yeah, uh, yeah. Are we, are we, no, okay. See, I, 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 I thought you were going to disparage something. I didn't. I know. am a little bit. Oh God. But, yeah. <laughs> hey, careful, careful, guys. We did the first season of Street Fighter, and I, to be honest, yeah. I don't think we we made that quite as deep. You know, yeah. you know, is and it was you know it was a fun show, it was an exciting it was, show. Yeah. It did well, successful. Mm -hmm. But you know, looking back on it, is it? I don't think I got to know those characters as well as we got to know the X Men, and I. So as a result, I don't know if the audience ever quite got to know them as well. I mean, there. It could have been done. It's just you know, there was an Avengers show that we worked on that was kind of a non-Avengers. It was Avengers without like the main. Without eight. the Avengers. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. 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 No Hulk. No, you know, no Iron Man. No, no Thor. Uh, uh, but the lead was Ant Man, right? And it had one of my favorite Hawkeye. 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 Who's the lead? Yes. Hawkeye. Oh, I'm sorry. Had had Hawk had Hawkeye. Hawkeye. And, was the leader. Uh, and, and uh, Scarlet Witch was or, in there somewhere. Uh, Falcon, Ant Man, Ant Man, and Ant -Man. Mr. Ant Wonderful was in there, or yeah, Wonder Mr. Man was in there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but in any case, it wasn't it wasn't what the fans were expecting. So yeah. you know, it, so it, 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 it's what it is. But okay, well back back to the show that we're we're saying wonderful things about. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> you know, to that point, it's it's one of the things that I love most about the the X Men animated series is when you guys were able to breach those topics. So two things, Storm, her having claustrophobia yes, and seeing a hero that has something that could be debilitating, but by the end of the episode with the Shadow King, she gets over it and shows you how to build resilience. And then another character like Nightcrawler, I'm not a religious person, but seeing the way he views his mm. relationship with religion, I can understand that and I feel for him. And it, it makes it a little more accepting uh, for somebody who's like me, who doesn't believe, who, who in terms where you're like, all right, I can see why there's an appeal to this, as opposed to being against that. It wasn't um, a proselytizing conversion episode. It was a discussion about the concepts of mm -hmm. faith, which I think is still fascinating that X-Men got to have that conversation on a Saturday morning kids show. That, was, that, was, that was hard. Holy moly. Just again, right. shout out to our censor lady. Oh, yes. Yeah, in yes, television, yes. especially kids' television, the censor person, it's you, and it's often a lady, has the last, has complete veto. Yeah. If she said, Morph can't get shot, Morph can't get shot. <laughs> if she said, no talking about God, there's no talking oh. about God. End of discussion. Yeah. So on these difficult story questions like that mm -hmm. luckily she really liked the books we lucked into somebody a woman <laughs> oh the, nice. the x-men books she so she wanted she us understood. to respect how adult they were so we come up to something like nightcrawler and she said okay let's i'll listen you know you can't do this gratuitously there's a bunch of stuff i don't want you to show or talk mm -hmm. about but if you want to do a show about faith 
let's do it and let's mm -hmm. let's let's do it thoughtfully and then sydney eyewater who was margaret lesh's right hand person who gave notes to, on every script on every series <laughs> he kept pushing yeah and which i kept like yeah. this this can't be happening we can't be pushing in this she direction. couldn't believe it she couldn't, couldn't believe, believe it when it. i showed her look we're doing an eye color script and since he's devout christian i thought well, it's got to be about faith right it's oh are you kidding on, on <laughs> saturday television that past anybody and we kept at it for a couple of weeks and the same thing with morph she was nervous about that because no oh. kids people heroes and kids shows don't get killed mm -hmm. uh you know in the first story um but then she saw that we weren't doing it gratuitously and it was all about the grief of the remi remaining family the hero's journey that this means yeah. something and there's a stake in this. Yeah. The, the consequences to being an x-man so she bought all that it was wonderful that. it was like <laughs> you know two weeks of, of really careful discussion about mm -hmm. how to handle this and then of course we come back for the second season and we had planned him to be dead he was yeah. supposed to stay dead that was the, everyone's intention and then somebody foolishly asked the fans they had a focus group of seven-year-olds sometimes Can we bring them back? <laughs> said, who's your favorite x-men in the first season and morph one in a landslide like, so we get a phone call while we're writing the second season you got to bring them back you no know that guy that you killed <laughs> off that you spent all that time working to be able to kill off <laughs> your sacrifice is there any way you can bring him back, please? <laughs> yeah. I, I, I cried and beat my head against the wall, but we said, okay, look, we're we're professionals. We'll we'll have we'll do something intense with him and bring him back, a little PTSD. And, and I think those stories turned out remarkable. Yeah, the they journey did. of Morph and Wolverine, I think, is is just is is a yes. heartbreaking and that's that's what it, that, that's what resonated so much with me when it came to yeah. Morph. It wasn't necessarily Morph. It was what happened to Wolverine. This is a yeah, man absolutely. that nothing bothers him. And he yeah. took Morph's death so mm -hmm. hard. I mean, we scream it out here at least every three episodes. This one's for you, Morph. <laughs> <laughs> we say it, we say it all the time. It's, it was, I, I, and I, I looked at Wolverine and I said, this guy's untouchable. Nothing <laughs> phases him besides the whole love triangle with him gene we'll go to that later but the fact that i saw him so distraught was what kind of got me like you know i i i think i i was already into batman and you know you know following the comics death is kind of normal yeah i get it, it was on a kid's show but it was normal and it wasn't really morph's death it was wolverine and seeing how yeah. bad that yeah. got him it was so hard like wow I think that's what happened to the seven-year-olds. <laughs> they yeah. saw everybody yeah. react to more because you also yeah. wrote him that he had his quick moment with everybody and they were all laughing and everyone had a special connection to more. And we want to make him as lovable uh, a, a, a friend and a family member as we could. So, so that when he's killed, it, it was, affects the, them all the most. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, I, I, is, yeah. Oh, please. Oh, no, just saying how, um, and again, Avery Coburn, understood and said okay you can't show it on screen uh, but if you go back and watch that watch those sequences it's it's even more chilling because we don't see it we just see their reaction when yeah. gene Gray says, i i can't sense i don't sense him it's like oh, oh, oh this means oh, yeah. this means wow. yeah, it's really, really it's you right here yeah. every time you know i, I, I watch it funny. every day and they were like hit you right here every time that's a that's a that's a funny thing is um i my favorite scenes are usually very little scenes and oh, when they meet, okay. when they're done with the missions and they and they literally come out the plane and Wolverine got some got some strength Wolverine just punches him in the gut goes you know nothing about pain little man I go my yeah. man you're five three how is he the little man <laughs> <laughs> you're five three you don't even look to his eyes Scott is like six feet and uh, he just Aaron him in the gut goes, you know. Wolverine's loss and his grief and that is yeah. the only time in that's the, the only entire time series. in 76 yeah. episodes any one of our team punches another one that's the and only she time let us do it because she understood it was about his grief yeah and yeah. And, and and that he wasn't using his claws that's the kicker no claws that's why Scott yeah. was so next time I use the yeah oh my god <laughs> that yeah. that dynamic of the jokester and by the way that one scene where he's sitting down watching tv and he keeps morphing into people that's yes. what i do with that power 
That's what I would do. <laughs> I would literally do that. I would sit there, switch the channel, you know, when he puts it uh, ironically to Senator Kelly, you know, that's, that's a fun little throw in there tying. And I'm like, I would do oh, that. Yeah. But right away, yeah. you're like, I like this guy already. Two seconds in, I would do the exact same thing. And, you know, it's funny to the point where you said Gene just, I don't sense him. Ever since that, to me, it is more impactful when they don't show anything and yeah. you realize that a character is like, oh, wait, something's wrong. Oh, That has yeah. always gotten me since then. Just those two simple words. It's amazing how effective yeah. the emotionality came through, even for little kids. And it's funny because as here in the backstage, you know, they allowed us to do this and they, you know, having to struggle to get certain things out. Coming from the other side of the TV, watching it, I always felt like, oh, they trust us yeah. to to watch this and to, if we don't understand, to learn and to grow. And they're not just spoon feeding us. Yeah, That's yeah. why I always find that this show was vastly different and ahead of any other show. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. That that's it, it means, it means a lot so much to hear that because that's what boy we were hoping for that. But you know, we, again, the fact that it did happen and and you were there on the other you were yeah. there and you got it. There were like six Yay. six or seven of us that were in the middle of the creative decisions, and every one of us had been frust had been in this business for you say ten years, had been frustrated by how dumbed down a lot of mm. the stuff was. We were all forced to work on. And we just kept looking at each other. He said, that's not what I remember. I remember oh, when I was seven, I wanted to be challenged. I wanted, if the 12-year-old guy next to me was get was loving a movie or something, I, I even if I had half didn't understand it, I wanted to watch that and yeah. be challenged by it, try to figure it out, rather than to watch something that's, oh, that's for little kids. No. Every person on the team remembered wanting to be challenged as a kid. So mm -hmm. we never... You know, I don't remember cutting something back you know, because, oh, you know, kids aren't going to get this. <laughs> no, I you know, can't. I don't know, we tried to keep stuff clear, and they, they were worried. The people were worried. He said, well, continuing stories. You know, kids are going to oh. be off running around. They're not going to remember. How, and then so well, that's when our editor said, well, I could do this previous on the X-Men thing. Yes. You know, 45 yes. seconds at the beginning right. and catch everybody up to where they need to be caught up to so that if there's some continuing elements in the story, They'll I'll just put this here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was important. But as far as as far as writing the stories, we were we we were writing for ourselves. I'd remembered hearing the 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 cartoons that Warner Brothers made like in the in the forties. Oh my god. 30s, 40s, yeah. 50s. They were really intense and some of them very yeah. well and hilarious. Yeah. Uh those guys they were off on a corner of Warner Brothers lot and they were writing that stuff for themselves. Rocky they, they and Bullwinkle. Won, and Rocky and Bullwinkle. They, there were, there, there were a certain number of cartoons that you, if you were seven, you didn't get half of it. No. Nope. But they made it so fast-paced and so much fun. It didn't matter. You sensed what was going on, and that was enough. And if you, and as you, as I got older, again, I went Rocky, Rocky and Bullwinkle. I mean, just as I got older, it's like, oh my God, this is even more genius than I understood as a kid, because now I'm understanding. But it didn't. Yeah. It didn't bother me that I didn't catch it the first yeah. time around. I still there was still stuff there to keep me uh, amused. Yeah. 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 Oh, um, I just wanted a quick note about the voice of Morph, Ron Rubin, who uh, uh, we want to give a shout out he's, to. He's he's more manic and crazy than the than that <laughs> character. <laughs> <laughs> that pilot episode being read as oh, these yeah, Canadian yeah. actors are being told, "Hey, we got a new it, show." Thirteen yes. episodes, and they all know each other. And all come oh, in for hey, this thing. There. Oh, yeah, it's a two part. There pilot episode yeah. we're gonna be 13 we're all gonna get 13 paychecks yeah. and morph looks down and says i die <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute that's that's our episode two i i no wait this can't be right, can't be right. And he, can't be right. you know he ran up to the, <laughs> the voice director and said this they don't mean this do they he said sorry yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to, to his credit ron came back when when morph got revived but again just so to set the record straight Morph was really supposed to stay dead, and we mean yeah. that. We were there. We. I just want yeah. you to know. But coming back as damaged, and then the struggle with Wolverine, I think added so much rich richness to yeah. the yeah. universe. Yeah. And, 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 and you don't have to tell us, as comic book fans, we know death we is it. never permanent. 
I, w- I was in the room at Comic Con when they said when Joe Casada said Wolverine it will stay dead, and then six months later he came back. Yeah, he's back. <laughs> yeah. but the, the cool part about uh, Wolverine's struggle and more finding his way when he came back was the fact that you also showed us that it's okay to go through things. Like mm-hmm. like Wolverine was going through his grief the way he could, and it's like it's okay to go through it. And 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 Morph, it's like sometimes when you lose your way, you have to go find yourself. You're not just gonna snap back into who you were before. You know, so it, it shows that. And and I appreciate that because you know I went through certain struggles like that also. Mm-hmm. And you know, to to see someone go through it kind of makes the path a little easier. You know, so that mm-hmm. that you know that makes it, you know, enjoyable to watch and it's something memorable and all and, and and although it was in a different form or or format i guess it was easier to digest i i, I completely agree with you so it was easier yeah. to digest that kind of stuff as a kid and yeah. and it and, 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 and yeah maybe it was a it was a rough topic sure and mm-hmm. maybe we see some of our favorite heroes going through stuff that maybe we saw our parents go through or maybe mm-hmm. our older brothers or or cousins and the fact that it was in a cartoon, it's like, okay, I kind of, I kind of get this yeah. too. And it did just make things okay. And I mean, what a crazy time slot to put this cartoon, <laughs> right? It's like we all have our, we all have our bowl of cereals. Mom and dad are right there, and 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 we're just looking back. Like, is, is it cool if I watch this? You guys are okay. <laughs> it, it was. You know, I completely understand it, and although. Yeah. The, when you look back, some of these rougher topics, they really weren't, I wouldn't say rough, but real. And okay. it was just, it was refreshing to see that. Yeah. Yes. We were amazed as we were starting to get, ratings came in once a, once a week, as I recall, and there various analytics and eventually would filter down to us at our home office. But <laughs> for whatever magic reasons, it was hitting the target demographic, mm-hmm. which was the younger you know, yeah, like kids. six to six to twelve year old boys kind of mm-hmm. was the, it was hit the younger Gerger demographic. But it's hitting the girls too. It was, it was hitting yeah, every, it, it was, oh, it that, was yeah. everybody. And yeah. College students were watching it in their dorms and in the common room, and parents were watching it with their kids and grandparents. It's like, whoa, wait a second. You know, it yeah. And, and they never, you know, when we have discussions about other shows <laughs> which which are more, a lot more narrowly written, uh, we kind of say, look there's no reason like you have to write this for a, a three-year age gap you know eight to eleven right which can yeah, be how shows are and targeted. A, a lot of times they say oh no 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 you know our advertisers like this because mm-hmm. they know that they can sell uh you know whatever clothes or cereal or whatever yeah. yeah but if you have a huge audience and it's everybody how do we figure out what to sell on yeah. your show mm-hmm. yeah so so we get that pushback sometimes like make it narrow mm-hmm. and to, you know, there's no reason. There's no reason to. Uh, little kids are going to like this if you make it fun enough. You make it fast paced enough. If you make and, it bright enough, and I make mean, it make it real yeah, enough, yeah, they'll yeah. they'll get it. We always we always had a, the reference point was somebody brought up. Well, what do you have all these these adult romance tensions and dramas in this thing for? You know, what eight year old's going to understand having his heart broken by you know the, the girl being? And so every little kid. Has friends and breaks we got up. With, it. And has favorite friends, and yeah. loses friends, or gets, daily. <laughs> you know, maybe maybe feels like he's betrayed a friend. Oh yeah. And so, just because these are twenty five year olds on the screen that are that are doing more than the little kids are, their emotion is the same. You know, the kid's going to get the emotion of Gene yeah. and, and Scott and Wolverine. And Wolverine triangle, mm-hmm. even if they don't know what a love triangle is. And they'll yeah. get Gambit and Rogue. You're, 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 you're each other, unable to get together and they'll yeah. say, you know, well, there's this person I always wanted to be with, but we could never get together. And so you get, you, know, you just, you want to shape some of these people <laughs> that don't say, kids get stuff. They, they do. Them. They yeah. get stuff. You say it all the time. And... Than you, you can never imagine. So that's, yeah. a, that's one thing I actually love about the series. Like there's one, every character, there's something I can take to them and relate to. Uh, Beast, I've always liked poetry here and there, you know what I mean? And he says, he and I read, a, he says a quote, and I'm like, I've read that. So I, I, can relate to him. <laughs> I love and then that, I love When you have Logan, a huge loner, and probably one of the most violent people you ever met, and I've taken martial arts, so I'm ready every day. And then you have somebody <laughs> like Gambit, who is, uh, who you don't know much about. A lot of people don't much, because I, sometimes I used to hold things in. 
I should just keep it to myself, you know. But on the outside, I'm showing this very positive, happy person sometimes. You never know. You know what I'm saying? He was a yeah. real ladies' man. You know, I can never relate to Cyclops for, for many reasons. That's other things. <laughs> Magneto. I understand Magneto protecting your people at all costs. I'm protecting yeah. mine. What's mine, I'll, pro I'll do by any means necessary to your Malcolm X thing, too. Uh, by any means necessary, I'll protect my people. So there's always, um, I don't know, how do I say it? It's always like rogue. Influence. You want to be part of everything of this group with, but you feel you don't fit in no matter what you do. And the uh, thing I loved about her too is she was so powerful. More, she was stronger than anybody else on the team. Yes. Yeah. And, it, and she sits on top of it uh, strength-wise. And then there's Storm, who is literally a goddess. And you're like, <laughs> the two most powerful people besides Xavier are women. So think yeah. about, you're like sitting there like, wow. Yeah, you can, you can really appreciate every character for their worth. You know what I mean? I'm yeah, just saying. Yeah. yeah. No, no. But you, you, yeah, but then, you also brought up the the the, the gender issue back in 1992, and here oh, we are. Oh yeah. Here, and it it didn't emasculate any of the male characters because you had female characters. It was just everybody had an equal shot at being the best character he or she yeah. could be. Yeah. And I, it was never an issue. It was never an issue yeah, ever in the show. Yeah, because we, we, we wouldn't, we tried to sell and you know, develop other shows or working working up other series. There there was, the, there you can imagine, you get these notes or the, the people tell you, look, it's boys action adventure. <sighs> you know, give us, Six Smurfs and a Smurfette. That what one always came to me. <laughs> yeah. No, just stop all it. And, and we just, we didn't even, we didn't plan on it being 50 50 uh, women and men mm -hmm. in the show. I mean, it ended up being 50 50. We just picked the eight most, most intense and in, different, the different ones we could pick. It ended up being four and four. And so, so Marvel gave the but, that existed. But that Marvel was, was cool with that. Yeah. And mm -hmm. we didn't get some. Luckily, I think when we started out, there wasn't a toy deal in place, so we didn't get <laughs> some colleagues say, "Oh, you don't understand the female, you know, the female action figures sell twenty percent less than the males do, so get rid of half, you know, get rid of Storm and Rogue." You know, we didn't get that yeah. note. Thank God, which we've had on other shows. Yeah, yeah. And I wonder if, if this has ever come up uh, when people are speaking with you, uh, the character Jubilee, yeah. when when she first came on on the scene. I watching it, I was a little iffy on her, you know, just being my own, you know, sensibilities. And then watching Wolverine take to her and take her under her wing kind of gave a sense of, oh, okay. So we can can if you see somebody like in school or somebody in your neighborhood that you know you don't think you might vibe with, there's a way to connect, there's a way to bring them in. You don't have to keep them isolated. If you know. If somebody doesn't seem like they fit in the group, but you think oh, I, they might come in, it's okay to bring them in. Has that ever come up when uh, people have talked to you? Because that's the one thing I've noticed and that I've actually applied. When, you, you know, because I used to be a former uh, Navy. So oh in God. boot camp and when I was out on my ship, yeah. I've applied that to bring more people into the group and be more, it's, you know, it's, it's like, it's funny, you know, we haven't ever said quite that way, but if you point it out, she is the one that's the most different from everybody because she's yes. she's thirteen, yeah. And we used her at the beginning mm -hmm. as this as this wide eyed. I don't know what this world's about. Is kind of for the, the audience to identify with as she discovers the X Men's right. world as you do. Mm -hmm. But then after that, she's still you know she's still there the next day. Yeah. With, okay, what yeah. is her, what's she, what's she growing and through going through? And you're right, having them accept her even though she was so di so different from the, the rest are basically all you know, 25, 20, 25 to 30 yeah except for wolverine and xavier who were both ancient <laughs> and they <laughs> thought and they they thought they almost lost her too and it was like this crazy oh, yeah. mission to like get her back so oh, yeah that was intense so and and it yeah. showed everyone like hey everyone gets a fair share here like we grieve for yeah. everyone the same we will go through anything we need to do for anyone to get them back and make them feel safe. It did have this weird dynamic. I know exactly what Cap is talking about, where it's like, 
you finish watching the X-Men and you go to school and like you kind of make your own little ragtag like team of misfits. And it's like, okay, you don't fit in. You don't fit in. I don't fit in. Dude, we're the X-Men. Let's just make this happen. <laughs> and like yeah. we're and then everyone is kind of like, you know, they find their own way in their own little group. I think that was one of the best things that happened with X-Men. Everyone just understood that, hey, we all got a fair shot here. And yeah. obviously, I don't know if that was the direction or what you guys wanted, but it just serendipitously kind of happened that way. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I think the idea of found family was so important to the show without, you know, without hitting it with a stick. You know, yes. 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 everyone yes. here, yes. Yes. every one of the X-Men who found their way into into the X-Mansion, you know, is coming from their own personal traumas, you know, no, and and in, in in that they find each other, I think is what I'm. And when they're to say. voluntarily, and three or four of them leave, you know, <laughs> Wolverine leaves three or four times. Yeah, uh, <laughs> leaves and go off to get married with the wrong guy. Yeah. I mean, that was a, that was a funny uh, uh, story discussion with with the writers. And go, got an idea. I don't know how to play this out, but let's do it. Uh, it's like th this woman, you know, has just found the worst boyfriend and <laughs> nobody's going to tell her you know so it's so, so okay she, she just finds out that she's engaged to hitler and what do you do she's not going to listen you know <laughs> but, but, you know those kinds of mo those, those personal moments again we have a lot of stuff blowing up but really it comes down to what's going on per, for each character humanizing and, them yeah and cap you mentioned uh, Wolverine and Jubilee have, you know, sort of uh, developing a special relationship. Yeah. In the opening two-parter, when she's in the mansion freaking out and somehow the danger room, break, she, she, that's the only time I think I've ever seen her. She takes out Wolverine. She zaps him. She zaps him, and he goes. Flying and everybody backwards. laughs at him because all oh, the little girl just zapped the big tough guy. Yeah. Fun and she yeah. panicked, but, but and she feels bad and Wolverine's a little growly. But yeah, that. that, like was, that, that, moment, that oh yeah, it was having oh, yeah. great. And and then she and Gambit had a this is not, had a special relationship that, that yes it, mm -hmm. yeah he, in the very, in the very beginning time. actually it's the first yeah, actually yeah. actually met was Gambit right right right, right, right. in the store right, and he's yeah. like <laughs> he's putting on that girl with the cards all of a sudden he's like <laughs> and he saved her <laughs> from the Sentinel he was like oh I man you gotta pick up somebody your size it's not yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The yeah, style, the yeah. style. <laughs> so, so, so one thing, right? So, okay, it's 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 the nineties. It's yeah. the wild west of kids' cartoons, and and some things are starting to get better. Um, and you know, we've heard all the rumors, we've watched all of the YouTube videos. You know, there was a lot of obstacles uh, to get this going. Some people have deemed this show the show that was never supposed to work. Like a lot of a lot of people have said that. So, mm -hmm. what were some of the some of the biggest uh, obstacles that you guys faced? How much time have you got? That's, that's, that's why I asked. We're we here got another all night. Yes, we got another. As two long and as half you want to be on, as long as you want to be on, on. we yeah. yeah. talking about yeah. comic books and cartoons all day. Yes, yes, yes. all day. Yes. All day I think it, it all it, the biggest parts came while. During the seven months, while we were trying to write it and draw it at the table, at, you know, you know, and and make this world of these thirteen and a half hour stories, mm -hmm. without anybody having seen it, because we all believe it's it's like you have to have faith with, with what you're seeing in your your mind. Mm -hmm. Don't know what, and there are moments like we got the first uh, recording back from from Canada. Well, I'm gonna and it, me here. we all just died inside because. We tried to tell them. Yeah, they're, they're wonderful people up there. Very professional. They, uh, the guy that, cassettes. yeah, the, the guy <laughs> that, that was directing the voices had directed Beetlejuice for us for a year, uh, for Fox. And so you know the guy is sharp. And Canada's got a very talented pool yeah. of voice talent. And by the way, it was because of money. It was yeah. cheaper to yes, buy voice talent. Yes, 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 yes. Always. Yeah. But so, no matter how much we wrote it down in our notes and put it in the scripts. They just couldn't quite believe that they that we wanted a serious adult show. So what we got back, and you know, again, cassette. again, there's no internet, so we have to wait for the snail mail of the audio cassette. For, so we're listening wow. to you know, the, the Wild uh, West. Uh, yeah, we're listening <laughs> to the, the, the first uh, the pilot, the, the two part pilot, and it's horrible. It's Scooby Doo uh, X Men. It's just you know, it's talented people. But being silly little versions of our characters, 
because that's how that you know, animation for universe 30 does. years that's what they've been doing you know that's been the standard and that's what people wanted to hear and that's where they made their bread and butter yeah and so that's what they get so we put the brakes on sent a couple people uh the producer director a couple producers from here and the executive up to canada a couple people from marvel so about half a dozen of us that all understood what we we're trying to do and sat with them for two weeks and said look we have to we recast this you guys you know we understand why you did it the way you did it but it's just gonna it's wrong 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 go more intense and they start they went to the theaters they went to get shakespearean actors the live from, theater. from toronto mm -hmm. they got all these intense dramatic voices and actually i think our feeling is is that if they done a kind of okay job the first time we would have had to put up with it because this this recasting costs money yeah. And, and yeah. Money to but we recast it and they went overboard making everybody intense and dramatic and that was perfect. perfect. <laughs> the fact that they went overboard to make up for the first miss actually seemed to really help the show. But that was that was one moment. Okay, the voices. This is it's, we it's we, we wrote eighty pages and this <laughs> four hundred lines of dialogue, and three hundred and eighty eight of them are so wrong. I don't know where to start. And that's before even animation has begun. Yeah, just the, yeah. The, the, that's just yeah. we've got we got the storyboards drawn and we've got which looked great by the way. The storyboards look great, so the artists were getting it, and the writers were getting it, and then the music guy got it oh, finally. I saw a name come up there. Someone was asking about the awesome theme song. Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. 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 That was All the flowers too, because the way the world works, the guy who wrote that theme song was on salary uh, yeah. at Saban Entertainment, so he was getting his weekly paycheck. No. And uh, he, wrote, he, wrote the, he wrote the Power Rangers theme too. Oh, yes, you know does. that. All you right. know that he wrote both of those. <laughs> And never got a penny over his, whatever he was making an hour while he was working. Yeah, but his oh, name is Ralph wow. Waldo. That guy deserves so all whatever, that however many credit. billions of dollars. <laughs> yeah, those two, those two opening sites have made for somebody. They haven't made him for Ron. Hey, but if you saw Doctor Strange or if you watched the new Ms. Marvel series, oh yes, you have to hear like five notes and you automatically yeah. and just oh. yeah, here we are again. Oh no, just, no, that, it's that's instantly recognizable. It doesn't take much. Yeah. You hear a little riff, you go, I know that. There it is. We don't get tired of it over here. I got, yeah, I got it. We, we don't get tired <laughs> yeah. of it. Oh, yeah. Today. Now, now, that's on the flip side of what Cap said. There was difficulties to it naturally. You know what I mean? It's a new yeah. network. It's in the property that nobody knows. Now, what actually was the fun part about doing everything? The creative process, uh, the casting, how did all of it come together and you guys just had a great time doing it? You know, it, it, it was one of the few times when uh, you often say lightning in a bottle just because Fox Kids was willing to take the chance. Uh, Marvel Comics X-Men universe was 30 years deep already in a comic book form. So there was a rich well that was being that was there to be drawn upon uh the artists who came on board they knew they knew the show chapter and verse every cameo you saw and you know you saw them larry houston uh we'll get to that in a moment but so there were people everywhere who who either everyone was committed to doing what they could do with what they what they knew what they had what they were able to do um and as writers it was just a sandbox for yeah. us to play in because this was the first time any of us had been allowed yeah to write these kinds of stories there were like three for for me being from like day one in february till we finally saw the first episode sneak pre previewed on october 31st halloween during all that time uh <laughs> in, in my head you know, in the writing of the first in working with the writers or five or six people worked that first season mark eden probably wrote four of them you know he and his brother michael were buddies of mine from college so we were having the great we were having a great time it's like we were getting to do the action show we wanted to do that we'd always wanted to do mm -hmm. since we all were friends programming you know uh peck and paw movies in high school in college <laughs> so so we were, we were we were doing that in terms of writing the script and hoping for the best yeah uh, you know, hoping that it would turn out to be something kind of like we were seeing in our head. So 
Mm-hmm. That was exciting and playful. I mean, we're obviously fighting to keep things from being changed because a lot of times it's <laughs> going pretty well, and then somebody will throw a, throw a curve and say, no, the advertiser mm-hmm. wants to change half the characters or you know, mm-hmm. whatever it is. And you, in previous shows, all of us working on, on those shows had kind of, well, maybe you know better, it's your money or whatever. In this case, everybody just said, hell no. Three or four people, including Will Mignot, who was like the head supervisor who held the whole thing together, supervising designer. Uh, there was a time when we were got a phone call saying, you need to put the uh, hap- Happy Meals toys, toys from Australia in the show. So, And they're like storm on a tricycle. Here you go, folks. <laughs> These are the, These are the Australian Happy Meals toys, which are cool looking. Hang on. Oh, oh there we go. All right, let me set this Whoa, up for you. Wait, wait a minute. I've never yep. seen that. No, oh, you yeah. not These are only in yeah. Australia. So, there you go. The show. So we, we got the phone call during, during, you know, in the middle of writing and drawing this saying. Well, you got to help me here. Saying. <laughs> uh, there's Cyclops. Oh, there we are. Okay, there, there's Magneto. There's Magneto. And there. a tricycle. Magneto and a tricycle. Look so 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 Magneto. And here's Storm in yes. her tricycle. But, oh well, my God. Magneto and Storm can fly. They can levitate. They don't need a tricycle. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so, it is, but so, but we literally got the phone call saying from Will saying we just hit a real bump in the road here. The uh, people, uh, the folks in Australia, the folks in Australia, McDonald's in Australia, yeah, say that they've got to deal with Marvel. That we're going to put this stuff in every episode. And if we don't do it, we're all going to get fired. Wow. And there was about a week there that wow, we're really? fighting this. And this is 1992. And, and we went to the head of production at Graz, <laughs> at, at Graz, and they backed us. We went to Margaret Lesh, and she backed us. And we went to, we had to go, and somebody had to pay, you know, pay them back for whatever they paid to put these toys <laughs> yeah. in. The toys out. Wow. Somebody had to pay them back because otherwise, you, they are the, kind of cool, the, though. The, the, They're the so cool. Watch, the show you would have watched would have been very different. There was a, there was another time that the show almost ground the show almost ground to a halt. They designed the whole thing the way the way, well, yeah. And yeah, this is another. Uh, we get product placement requests requests a lot. Walking. Walking. Yeah. Walking to Wolverine. Walking a walkie talkie of his head. <laughs> it's very tactical. So we're, we're, we're it's funny. Show, but... I think that would have fit better with Jean Grey. I'm yeah. Just... Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 But there was a time, you, you know, the design of the show looks a, a lot like uh, Jim Lee. Yes, and we Jim started Lee. Oh, with yeah. him. Yeah. And we looked at you know twenty different mm-hmm. people, and the designers also had a look. J- Jim's got the simplest, cleanest look. It'll work best for animation. Let's start with him, and then make it our own. And so we're all. Going along, the entire world had been designed. All the characters, we'd written half the scripts, and we get a phone call from uh, Marvel saying, uh, you're going to have to change that. You're going to have to redesign everything. What? And, what? you know, what? we're like, what? two months in, said, huh? You know, we're already like a month <laughs> behind because we got, <laughs> don't have a behind. schedule. <laughs> and says, you have to change everything. Uh, we can't. It's we don't want it to look like Jim Lee anymore. What? Why? Why? Well, well, we didn't. We had no idea. What? What's? What's? We had all agreed. All the all the people had agreed that this is the best look. What has changed? So, to his credit, without tell, warning anyone, without warning Stan Lee, without warning anybody uh, about what he was doing, Will Minio, the head designer, said, "Okay, you want something different," and he designed. Uh, all, a character sheet with all of them looking like really cheesy Hanna Barbera 1964 <laughs> characters with you know big Scooby eyes and things, yeah. and sent that in on a Friday saying, "Okay, here's a uh, new design. Let me know what you'd like me to do with it." And everybody lost their mind saying, "Oh God, this is so awful. Do they really think <laughs> this is right?" He had he hadn't warned the other artists. He hadn't warned anybody, so it'd have the biggest impact. And the point got across. So this is crazy. This is crazy to change yeah. something that's right now. And we found out later it's because Jim Lee and you know three or four other artists had gone to, had, just, had just left to create Image Comics. And so 
you know, as on most businesses, Marvel at the time didn't want to to celebrate somebody that just left them. But we yeah. didn't know. We didn't know that. We didn't know that's why they wanted us to turn our show upside down and make the des designs wrong. But that was that was a, another one of those weekends where we didn't know if on Monday, you know, we were going to have to start all over. There were no cell phones. We had to go to the drugstore to fax things to New York. Three <laughs> you know, hour time difference. Telling yeah. communication was yeah. very different. Back fax, then. long three page faxes to each other. Oh, and I want to, again. I want to point out we've we've talked about Batman at the same time here. But just so you guys understand the time compression that you were operating under, you got a call. You you had been placed on hold to do a to story edit a show for Fox Kids, and there was a meeting coming up in February '92. Oh, that's great! You get you know, yay, employment. Typically on an, on a show, you you like to have in a perfect world, you get a year to develop a show, and that includes designing your characters, coming up with the universe, coming up with the you know, the, the the look of it. You got a call in February. Mm -hmm. You went in and you were told, "Oh, that show we told you, you're going to, you're not doing that. Uh, you're you're doing X Men. This is February '92, and we need to have it on the air in uh, September. September of '92. Wow. So that's seven months to create, craft, develop, uh, audio design, what, what? everything. Wow. Whereas Batman was already they did work out for a year. So we we were always kind of <laughs> they had all this money and time. Yeah, yeah because, I'm just letting but, you know. But the good side of it was because, as I say, all Jim of our Gordon. artists. Most of our artists had worked on, on helping develop the Batman show in one way or another. A bunch of them had, so they understood how beautiful it was going to look. Mm -hmm. And so, that, so instead of scaring them, which would have been kind of a natural human thing, they said, "Look, we got half the budget. The animation's not going to look as beautiful. What we're going to do instead is cut it twice as fast." And literally, our animation production, our our design production people that we worked with had it in their mind and we we helped because we just jammed the sto <laughs> stories with twice as much stuff as usual. They just had it going boom, 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 so that you didn't have time to look and say, well, your animation's a little creaky. You it know? was. Uh, yeah. Sometimes better than others, sometimes sharper than others, but we didn't have the time or, to fix anything. We didn't have the budget to make it beautiful in the first place. So, yeah. so they said, okay, get, you know, make up for it for like Batman, you want to linger on how oh, beautiful it looks. The images are just. And the same guy, the Cindy, Cindy who, I who was our immediate boss, gave us all our notes. Crazy, crazy man. He ran both shows. He ran all the base, all their best shows. And he said, Batman is, is cool jazz. X-Men is a garage band. And yes. I love that. And you so, know, so I, that, I love that. I get we, that. We wrote to that. We had everything overlapping and never pausing and never stopping. And Larry Houston will tell you, you never see him walking because <laughs> walking is expensive. You cut right to the jet. <laughs> <laughs> boom, boom. Yeah. 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 But it keep, today, so, 30 years later, it still feels you know, so, like it moves along. Yeah. You, yeah. Just, yeah. So it, it helped us with the pace. And the yeah. and the people, speaking of X-Men 97. Oh, oh, are we? Oh, yeah. well. And the people, oh, are, are we? The people who <laughs> are X-Men 97 who are ooh, wonderful people, by the way. And there doesn't, they're, does, they're like a hundred of them, and they're <laughs> they've got uh, and they're all big fans of the show. But they said one of the things they wanted to make sure, you know, they they wanted to have that pace. That the pace yeah. was part of what they loved mm -hmm. about the show. And so it's uh, okay. He brought it up. Let's just we'll get it out there. Um, <laughs> just plus Marvel Animation, to our astonishment and delight, have announced they are coming up with X Men ninety seven. Which is officially coming out next year sometime. Next fall. Next fall. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> That's as much as yeah, but but um, we we and we are honored along with Larry Houston. They've tapped us, the three of us, to come on board as consulting producers. So we we have we've been able. Uh, I'm not going to say anymore, but but we really love the people who are doing this. We love what they're doing with it, and it is a continuation. If you watch X Men now and watch all five seasons, including the last season where the animation is, oh dear God! But the stories are solid. <laughs> but you get through that. This the new show will pick up. Saban and trying to cut cost. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we yeah. you'll know, start watching it again now. So be all <laughs> okay. Saying, okay. Wait. Wait. So so I I I know we can't talk about it, and obviously I won't I won't pry. But I did have a question. 
But I guess it links, yeah, it links into to, to 97. So is there anything, you know, I know that you guys wanted a, 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 a another season after it ended, but because of what you just mentioned, you know, the animation and trying to cut costs and all of that, unfortunately, you didn't get that. Is there anything that you guys didn't get to explore? And maybe would anybody be exploring it in 97? Let me let me kind of go back and um, sure. just uh, we we don't know what to tell you about X-Men 97 beyond okay. that it's okay. going to be a continuation. But okay. Eric was genuinely committed to wrapping up the series at the end of season four, uh -huh. which was the operatic four part of Beyond Good and Evil, which yes. you got your time travel. You got and you wrote you and Mark Hedens yeah. wrote yeah. that. We were, yeah. It was, it was going to end four half hour story. So it's 160 pages and it was all set up to have <laughs> Five of the X Men leave the team, including yes. yeah, yeah, Scott and Jean and mm -hmm. Xavier and Storm, right? And have have Bishop and Shard and uh, Psylocke oh. and Psylocke, uh, yeah, and, mm -hmm. and Arcade oh, Psylocke, sorry. come in. That's why all four of them are in in all the episodes, and that and have them this. become the new. So at the end of at the end of the series, it was good goodbye to five old X Men, hello to four new ones, and that, and that was, was going to be this series. cool little twist at the end. Well. Then you got the note saying, oops, they've ordered yeah. six more. They didn't order a whole series more, season more. They ordered six. More. six. Oh, it's six like, more. So you can't get rid of five and you can't yeah. add four new people on. So rewrite your whole, you know, rewrite the script so that nobody leaves and nobody new comes on. But it still was a fun big. Is slap. is there anything? Is there anything that within those four seasons you didn't get to explore that maybe you wanted to? Something that maybe you left behind that you couldn't put out there? Oh, you know, the, the interesting thing, the challenge, I think, and, and you, you guys have alluded to it, is the the, the, the size of the team of the X-Men themselves. Unlike, sure. say, Batman, you know, trying to service eight plus Xavier. Yeah. Nine, there were nine legitimate members of this team. And all the guest characters. And all the <laughs> guest characters. You know, uh, would it have been fun to spend more time with Nightcrawler? Sure. You know, would would Bishop? Oh my God, I love Bishop. You know, all. or another another Iceman episode, or or just yeah. you know, more Jean Grey stuff. I mean, there was so much each character that that could have been explored, and, 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 but there was just it, and, and, time. And, and, and and to be honest, from the point of view of the guy that's responsible for coming up with the new stories and getting everybody to check off on them. I just was relieved that we could stop at 76. Yeah. <laughs> you, don't, you don't need 10 more for me now, do you? Yeah. And, uh, so yeah, I think we I think we did pretty much all that that you know that that we were, yeah. were hoping. I, I, I got a question. You guys have a very illustrious writing career. I mean, up and down. I mean, coming from a guy that's seen most of it, not all <laughs> not all of it, right? Um, so Bionic Six. Yes. Something that I always relate to X Men, in a sense. Okay. Oh. Like in a sense, like if you see, if you see the four, the way it's done, it's a family sure. adopted of different uh, uh, creeds, nationality, whatever you know, whatever you say. And all of a sudden, now they're a family. I wow! I did not mean to go into the theme song. That got weird. <laughs> <laughs> family now, right? So that happens, and then you have the, and then you all of a sudden you come up and you write the X Men. Yeah, I'm not going to say all the between stuff. Bionic Six and the X Men, as you have written yeah, both, but, Eric. But, but Bionic Six was yeah, it was about five years earlier. Oh yeah, just five and, years. And okay. well, I'm not that old. I met you. Well, no, but when I met you, <laughs> it was already just five years. Yeah, there was this cool company called TMS, which is a Japanese mm -hmm. company, and they did. They were a really nice animation house. They did the the physical animation for the Disney shows, Disney Afternoon, mm -hmm. the best. The, that was like their number one studio overseas. And they had a little tiny office in LA, of four or five people. And Bionic 6, the, the people were there actually, it's the reason I was able to do X-Men is because I, I, was, I, I was hired there oh, in cool. 1986. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and Sidney Iwander, who was the guy, who was our boss at Fox yeah. and who, who, who recommended me to be, to be in charge of the X-Men, he was their entire development staff was this one executive and he hired me to do the grunt work so for nine months i came up with new shows and new shows and new shows and new shows and i actually had my friend mark Edens come out in tennessee and help me because it just yeah 
I just was so excited to get a small salary. I didn't mind <laughs> sharing with somebody. So for nine months, I come up with new shows with Sydney, and we sold one. It was called Galaxy High, Galaxy High School. Oh, I remember, was, yes, I remember John that. John Chris Bellucci, who's a wonderful artist. It, it sold to CBS. So, we, so I was there nine months. We sold one show. And as I was finishing up and leaving, they got this contract to do the Bionic 6. Mm -hmm. And they didn't, they had a little bit of product. They were kind of new to it. They didn't really have good production people, mm -hmm. uh, you know, set up. So they were kind of feeling their way to figure out how to pr actually produce their first sh show in America here. And mm -hmm. I did an episode for the folks that, that were, were, that they hired to run the show, but it was as I was, it was as I was taking off to go back to Hanna Barbera for a while, and then hop to Disney. It was right in that in that area where I was about, about to spend three years at Disney. So, so being at TMS, where Bionic Six happened, and I got to be part of it. But the big thing for me at TMS was getting this relationship with this guy Sydney and working with him day in and day out for nine months, so that when push came to shove in 1992, and his and Margaret looks at it and says, "Who's the best guy?" For an X Men, and he said, "Well, I think Eric, because wow. I'd had wow. this year with this guy. So, you know, you do your best work, and it's six years later, but he remembers, and yeah. so that's that's how you know that that got me the job. Wow! And you guys did a, a, very, been... a very cool little gym you did that I absolutely mm -hmm. loved. I used to wake up to go to high school to watch was Mummies Alive. I used to. Oh so my God! Thank you. I used to love Mummies Alive." So, so much. I was telling so early. I was like, Mummy's Alive was one of those shows. Like, besides all of your work, all your work's fantastic. Like I said, mm -hmm. I was up and down the line. It's amazing. But Mummy's Alive, it was, I don't know what it was about it. I think it was a teen aspect. Everybody was so different. Yeah. But then it came together. But it was yeah. just like that moment. I was like, that's a great show. Like a oh, general yeah, show, you know? We need, we need to get together with the, the, the obscenely young fellow named Seth Kearsley, who was the artist, designer, director yeah. on that. I think he was in his yeah. like 24, we, we, insanely we, young. I, I was approaching 40 by then, <laughs> you know, late 30s, and she was in her mid-30s, mid and Seth was you know, 23. The designer, he, the art yeah. designer. Yeah, and this guy, this guy it, it looked good. Yeah. It was not, it was, a, it was a smaller budget show, and it looked good. Yeah. And this great. guy. He killed himself. He designed yeah. everything. He, he did mo a lot of the storyboards, mm. and he just made it look sharp. Yeah. And we yeah. thought we did some pretty good work on that one. We're pretty proud of that one. And there are people come up and tell us that they really enjoyed it. So that was that was one of those good situations. We're working for the smaller company called Deke that did Deke. You know, Mad, Mad Lion. Yeah, and just yeah, yeah, Mad yeah. Mad yeah. Mad yeah. So they weren't, they weren't used to doing a big action show, but they'd seen that X-Men had made a ton of money. So they said, okay, well, we'll try. <laughs> and, they, uh, and so they, the nice thing about, about Deke is the people in charge are like salesmen. They're just trying to make a sale. As soon as they got a sale, they're on to the next sale. And they don't micromanage you when you're doing a show. <laughs> so the people in charge had no idea what, what we were writing, as long as the scripts are coming in once a week. Right. Know, that's cool. So we were kind of left our own devices pretty much cool. on that. We got a little bit of a the people put the, putting the money up were a little freaked out because we wanted to make it even older. We want we wanted to make it more adult, and they said, "Come on, you know, <laughs> our, 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 all of the people putting money in have little kids that they're trying to sell stuff to. Can you be a little less intense?" So that one we had that fight over, and it's a little softer or a little sweeter than it would have been if we'd had, you know, complete control. But we had we had great fun on yeah, that. Yeah, I'm glad you remember that. Yeah, that was a good one. When you see the episodes, you can tell like there's joy in it. Like it's a the show itself is just fun. Mm -hmm. I'm like glad to hear a that. lot of fun in it. You know, there's some lessons, but it's like from 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 the characters to the villain to the whole episodes of ways we set up. You're like, this is a fun show. And there's like it's a it's always great to wake up to something before you go to school and go, yo, that was fun. Now I gotta go to school. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but also in, in it, each character also had their own personality. Yes. Like you do, yeah. you do so well with the X-Men. You you kind of bought them out so well. You had the leader, you had the big guy with the, the, that was missing the arm that it came through mm -hmm. when he changed. You had the snake, which usually snakes are preserved for somebody that's not trustworthy, but meanwhile, he's literally the smartest guy in the crew. 
Yeah. And yeah. then the, the, the lady in the crew was literally efficient in everything she did. So I like I appreciated yeah. the intricateness of all the characters coming together. Yeah. I yeah. loved it because I would just sit there and go, I should have been so interested in this in, in the morning before I go to school. Because <laughs> <laughs> I still want to watch another episode, but I, I bet I'm gonna be late though. I gotta go. Like we we did our darndest to also be you know uh, as um because the the it, it, the Egyptian myth mythos there mythos mythos we were trying to be as um yeah. legitimate as we could yeah. be with that one I had a lot of fun with it but that also there yeah. was some pushback you know kids aren't going to understand the language you know yeah, blah, 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 blah. yeah the big again the big the big yeah. Egyptian words and we wanted to just grab those people and say. Have you seen Star Wars? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of big, strange, silly words yeah. in Star Wars. Every six-year-old boy in America has got that entire world memorized. Yeah. They know yeah. they know the names of every one of those weird-ass characters. They, yeah. it's, 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 it goes back to Cap's original point: is you never insulted us. You like you made it, you you gave us opportunity to interpret everything. And the same thing yeah. was alive. There was a moment of you can interpret it. The same thing with the other cartoon, whatever all the series you did is like I was able to interpret things through it. You know what I mean? Even back in the 80s when it was simplified, as you guys oh, what would put it, some things you can literally go and go, all right, I can figure that out. You know, like I have some intelligence, I guess, you know. One of the show when Eric mentioned that after the first 13 episodes, we were all of us released because they didn't think it was going to hit and <laughs> they didn't want to pay for anything you and mark and michael edens ended up on a new job for a show called exo squad which we did which oh. is yeah okay yeah. Yeah. he knows them all <laughs> was which was started <laughs> off even, yeah. yeah there's a great guy at universal that let us do it yeah. started off even more intense than x-men in that in the opening seat in the opening story uh these aliens invade earth and destroy the entire Congress. Yeah. It's like, mm -hmm. you know, they, it's blo a big deal they blast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We didn't never got in trouble for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, my God. It's, it's, ba it's basically a, like a, like a world war two story. Yeah. 65 episodes. Mm -hmm. And it starts off with the, the aliens coming in and, and, and taking and attacking earth. And they've got their base on Mars and, and they've taken over Venus, and and so there's all these space battles, big mm -hmm. space armada, big space battles, and gradually, the good guys take the planets back, and by the, by it was all connected. And Mark and Michael, I only did it for the first thirteen, but they couldn't went through fifty two episodes. It was all still all connected, and then Universal just stopped. He had the last thirteen episodes. That was common. Laid out, yeah. and he says, well, "I think we'll stop this one." The last thirteen episodes are still in Mark Eden's file cabinet. I'm just saying they exist. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, hey, the hashtag oh, somebody somebody right there, on his brother. Come yeah. on now, yeah. even hashtag. And I'm with it. <laughs> that was always uh, that was a bit too common back in the day when things just like yeah. stopped. It's yeah. just goodbye. Yeah. yeah, it's funny. At least once, once or twice, like every six months, me and one of my friends. We always bring up that series because no, he has no. the DVDs. We always like, yo, whatever happened to that <laughs> show? It just—it was one of our favorite shows that watched girls as a kid. I had all the action figures. Yes, no, and the great kids. toys. Oh my god, yes. great yeah. toys. I'm not gonna tear that apart, too, but yeah. Uh, Alec De Leon, the character, uh, was named after our second son. Yeah. Oh, so, nice. Uh, oh, nice. It's funny you know, the, the, the 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 one series that it, that Eric was part of was a uh, Sky Commandos. Oh yeah. I, I had the toys. And oh, I'm like, you know, wow. and the ones the that slide down the screen. To drive your parents crazy, it was Sky Commanders. Because <laughs> you're like, oh, it literally oh is a God. suction cup, one end of the room to the other room, yeah. and it's just wires. <laughs> and then you come into the room, and there's eight wires coming around. You're like, dinner. <laughs> and you're always looking at you like, can you, what are you doing you, right now? What is it? I go, uh, you bought this for Christmas. This yeah. is Sky Commandos. This is what's happening right now. Every, every it was a great, it was a, a cool cartoon, but a complicated toy. <laughs> yeah. Just yeah. Complicated. Yeah, every parent in America hated Kenner for coming up with that stuff. <laughs> and <laughs> and we, we, we kind of looked at him in the face and said, so we're supposed to come up with exciting action 
things that take place on, say, other planets and wherever, where the people need to slide down cables yeah. to fight. This, yeah, because that's what the play is. You know, you, we, get, we get some. <laughs> For some reason, they're always in the Himalayas of another planet. planet. <laughs> the Himalayas. Yeah. 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 So okay, uh, well, whatever, but you know, okay. it's, it's it's your dime. We'll we'll try to make we'll it exciting. Check. Yeah, it, it's actually a custom. When I went to Pluto, we were sliding down cables. They had it rigged up already. <laughs> I, had a, I had a massive backpack that literally allowed me to yeah. slide down to where I was. Yeah, no, I, I, I mean, that literal, the literal heart. I mean, the headaches my mom got. She tried to see eight lines coming across. <laughs> coming across. <laughs> green, red, blue, orange. She's like. Why? I go, well, this is my Christmas present. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> like, that's what it was. That, that's, what you, that's what I asked for. Blame the cartoons. And I'm like, nah, it was fun. <laughs> are, there, uh, are there any, uh, you know, maybe like a, a, a property that maybe you wanted to work with or maybe some other heroes that you wanted to write for that you never got to, something that you've always kind of wanted to do? Let me let me just say, given how things worked out timing wise, I I would have loved to have had the opportunity um, to have written for Batman the animated series. Oh, that, that, oh. that's, that's that's the gold standard. And and we've had friends. There are folks who wrote on X Men who also wrote on Batman. And I've always been just a little jealous about that. But <laughs> you asked about that. That that would have been the gold standard um, to have had the chance to write for them. Nowadays, okay, I'm going to say it. Rick and Morty. Oh my God! It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> we, we know a couple of people that, that, and we just we 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 stand back in awe. Oh, those guys' my, minds work so fast. Yeah, and are, yeah. are never ending. Are they, but they are X Men. Uh, uh, Jeff loved this, but they yeah. are X Men fans, and I love seeing the Easter eggs that pop up on yes. lots and lots show, of yeah. X Men Easter eggs in in that show. So yeah. that's we're we're just, we're prejudiced, but yeah, but yeah, that's that's, that's a that's. that's just of, of the current of current stuff, I mean, it's all over so, the place. It, There's so much stuff. Oh my god! We can't keep track of. He asked us, "You keep track of the X Men books?" I said, "We can't keep track of TV shows. <laughs> so much stuff everywhere, much less the books." One thing I mean, that back in the '90s, when when we get the ratings, uh, the four major networks and your local syndicated channels. Yeah. But there were there were Saturday mornings when every TV in America that was turned on, half of them were watching X Men. Over half of which North is an America. Astonishing Absolutely. thing to think about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, right. we try to tell our kids, you know, nowadays, <laughs> if 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 you get three or four percent of of the audience, you're doing great and you're you're a success. We we get like 55, 58 percent of the North American audience watching on Saturday morning during that that half hour. Yeah, and so that means that. Like 50, 60 percent of the kids are going back to the to the playground on Monday, and they're going to be talking about our show. We yep. didn't realize that at the time. Yeah. But now we think back because we meet people. We met people in Singapore. You know, <laughs> Malaysian luggage handlers ran up to us because she was wearing a hat. She said, "X Men, oh, it's our favorite," and they brought all the. Malaysian luggage handlers over to talk like, to us about you, X-Men. You watched X-Men? Oh, yeah. <laughs> the war was part of where we realized Fox put it everywhere. Fox got this show to every corner of the planet. Mm -hmm. was, you know, that used what, it to that it helped them learn English. Yeah, I mean, it's just one of those things we can't even fathom. We're still processing, you know, the, the reach of the show. What, and I'll also was, say... Uh, I, I like to think, and we're talking with you folks right now, that X-Men, the animated series, created a bridge into a world that allowed the creation of the um, MCU. Uh, that allowed the creation Absolutely. of the X-Men movies, which would, there was an audience that was, that was discovered, that was created with X-Men, the animated series, saying these characters can work. And then with, with the success of the X-Men movies, that then begat Iron Man, Thor, uh, and, and, and all those iterations, those things that did not exist, and I I'll, probably would not exist if there hadn't been the success of good old X Men the animated series. I That's know some I know some people have their thoughts about 
some of the older X-Men movies, you know, but I always say, I think Kelsey Grammer was a great beast. I say it all the time. It was was very fitting. I don't know. I mean, you you, you need a smart guy to to pull off beast. I always thought uh, thought it was fun. I say it on the podcast all the time. I'm glad that you guys brought up the MCU. And obviously now we will see uh, uh, live action X-Men, whether it's 25 or 26 or 27. We're going to wait. We'll wait. It's fine. We'll wait. But you know, after seeing these uh, early two thousand movies, what do you what do you think about that? And and how invested are you in the MCU? I know you say you have no time for anything. Well, well, well we've we've seen we've most, seen every one of the movies, pretty Come much on. all the movies. <laughs> Come on, uh, but but see, all uh, we haven't seen every episode of every TV series. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Plus, oh my God! Yeah, by too fast. Yeah, by too fast. Yeah, but yeah, the wow. mo- the movies kind of the, there's a weird combination. Kind of blew us away because here is what 100, 200 million dollar productions with these huge, amazing A level cast. Yeah, and all this production value and all come to life from this, you know, the, and relating to this, the stories we wrote for this little cartoon. We lived with these characters for five years. So they're really close to us. It's like watching Family Act. Yeah. You know? So in that <laughs> way, nice. well, there were some things that were amazing, like just casting Xavier. Or, oh, you know, God. Uh, for Patrick Stewart. That... Just you know, Magneto was great. I didn't imagine him as Magneto, but once he was in the role, you know, uh, Ian McKellen. You know, McKellen. So yeah. there were some beautiful casting done, and some incredible production. Oh my God. And you know, some of the, you know some of the stories really grabbed us. Some of them didn't. That's yeah. that's more of a per, you know that's more of a personal thing. They're not going to sure. not going to bat a thousand. And they could have picked anyone on the team, but they picked the team that yeah, had been yeah. on the original X Men animated series. And, we're, and nice. we're we're friends with the guy that wrote the first two, and so okay. we we know that we're friendly that, with him. Yeah, that that they 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 didn't go to the books; they just went to our show as a reference point. And just because I think they figured, well, the the TV show has has worked out the way to 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 put these stories on screen versus in in the book, which is a different which is a different craft. Mm-hmm. It's I, canon. I mean, it's canon. The, the yeah, yeah. animated yeah. series is canon. It is the definitive <laughs> X Men experience. That's right. I, I started the <laughs> podcast that way, and I will end it that way. <laughs> it oh, is yeah. the definitive X Men experience. You know, you know right. I want to say something a little selfishly, and I'm I don't want to put you guys on the spot, but the Phoenix Saga that you guys created yeah. versus the ones in the movie. I came out of the movie theaters both times they did it, saying they had the blueprint. Yeah, <laughs> they just do what they did yep. oh in the animated yep. series. What? Yeah. This oh, guy, the Phoenix Saga that you guys did, that is that. This the only Phoenix Saga. Yeah. Yes. 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 It's the only Phoenix I'm accepting. Yeah. <laughs> I believe it mattered that that you as an audience had spent three years inviting x-men into your home once a week for year for three years by this point and then you had the characters grow with you and, and then, then we took it out to outer space because we didn't for the first couple of years yeah. and then we we kind of expanded a little and you guys went with it. it was great just a quick note on this phoenix saga that was kind of a gift to me <laughs> for this for the whole show the first two years we were just writing as fast as we could and so they just looking at me and saying you know Here's half a dozen writers. Quick, you know, assign half a dozen stories. Get them out the door. Okay, boom, boom. So we did that for like the first 26 episodes. And then it was obviously very successful. They gave us more time after the after the first two seasons. So, okay, you've got more time now. So you're not quite as rushed. We want to do this big Phoenix Saga thing. And I said, okay, can I have some extra time on that? We'll, I'll get a few people started. But... I want to just have the same two guys write all five episodes with me. And so it was just my two buddies from college and me that sat down and did that five part story. And so it was otherwise on other large, you know, episodes would be like, grab this guy, grab this girl, grab this guy, grab this girl. You know, you just grab the four, the four that were available <laughs> and yeah. not necessarily the ones that you would have picked. I said, I want to do this with my two buddies. And that was, well, you guys had a shorthand, and, and we had a, and we had we had a little extra time to work on it. So that one that was very satisfying. And it's funny if we if we dig up somewhere in our stuff, we have a VHS tape 
that is just the Phoenix Saga. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's the best. Not not to not to put well to put you guys on the spot if you can, yeah, sure. if the MCU or Marvel came up to you guys and said, "All right, listen, we're stuck here. How would you guys introduce the X Men into the MCU?" Oh, that is a great question. Great question, bro. Jesus Boom. Christ. Oh, we, and, and, and you know you caught us with, you caught us without having caught us through. That is an excellent question. <laughs> yeah. So, oh uh, my god. That, uh, Can we say back up the money truck and we'll talk. Can I say that? <laughs> that sounds like a plan uh, to me. Uh, uh, come on, come on. Flag on the play. Absolutely. You brought the X-Men to the masses. Yeah. Sure. yeah. They need to come to you. But you know, that that is, that is an it's so excellent hard question. They, I, I can't. It blows my mind. I was having trouble keeping track of eight or nine X-Men sure. and their secondary people, their friends and family and the bad guys and the bad guys relations <laughs> and who did that. So just keeping track of the X-Men universe, yeah. which is maybe what 10% of the Marvel universe, just yeah. keeping track of that and, and bringing in the pieces and moving the pieces around to tell stories taxed me to about my limit. The idea of bringing them in with all the Avengers and all everybody else, you know, suddenly, you're going from juggling 50 characters to juggling 500 characters, and oh, wow. I just, I just explode. You know, Feige, like, Feige's a robot. Yes. Oh my god. <laughs> Feige oh, is a god. robot. You know, I all credit, all credit, because even if some things weren't quite as satisfactory as you know, my wish, dear God, they are. They yeah. got that train on the tracks, yeah. and yeah. they are. And, and they've handled it, and they've yeah. kept the fans happy, and they've kept this, you know, the movie solid. I mean. It's been bumpy. Uh, it's been bumpy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 There, are, bumps. There, are, there are hits and misses, but compared, you know, usually in Hollywood, what we're used to is if, if a company makes 10 movies, two of them are good. Yeah. Yeah. And three of them are watchable and five of them should never been made. So <laughs> that's, that's just, that's, you know, making movies is hard. Yeah. And so the fact that Marvel is batting over 500 for oh the dozen, dozens that they've done is just, it's just amazing. I mean, credit to Kevin. I mean, for for what he's done. And and this just for example, the and fact keeping that, track of it all. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> on, on Disney Plus, the whole Marvel, uh, the short seasons of these new series, WandaVision stunned me. I mean, and and, and I I started watching, uh, and I okay, I'll 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 keep I'll I'll hang in there. I'll see where this goes. Episode and four. I, episode I, four. Years, and I've realized they, and that was so completely different from. Yeah. You know the next show that they had, or the previous show that they had. Yeah. They they've been able to craft out yeah. these character specific sh short series that are uh, remarkable. And they've had this twenty year run, which is pretty amazing. Yeah. yeah. Um. I I hope they have another twenty. I hope people don't get worn out. You know the which is some fatigue, superhero fatigue. I hope that doesn't kick in, or maybe there's a lull and it comes back because they've just so many of them have been so good. I mean, when people ask us. I think we're so character focused that probably mm. the movie Logan was our favorite. Oh my god! Of the of the oh yeah. Movie. Oh my god! You know that's that was that did it because we think of them as real people. Yeah, they just Absolutely. happen to have these powers. They happen to be living together. They happen to have each other's backs during some crises when they're the only people who can handle it. And then to see them later in real life when they're retired or they're losing their powers. That was oh my you know, god, Patrick Stewart and and Hugh Jackman you know, and yeah. that yeah. team. That was just that really did it. that did it for us. And because they earned it, they earned it. And that just, was that and just was... so you know, the guy that created co-created Wolverine, Len Wein, oh, Len Wein, the writer, oh. he, he with an art with uh, artist David Cockrum, he, he created Storm and Colossus and Wolverine and, and Nightcrawler. Walker, Nightcrawler. He, he worked for Marvel. At, on yeah. The, uh, so in the mid seven yeah. in the mid seventies, he rebuilt. The X Men almost yes. from scratch. Yeah, and gotta sell, we, gotta sell those toys. We became close, we became close to him, yeah. and he was able to see. He moved that, out to L.A. And he, but he was in failing health and was yeah. was soon to pass. But was able to go to see the movie Logan yeah. and really loved it. Yeah. That's and so cool. Wow. He was like That's the cool. benediction that yeah. mattered. That was the most important. Yeah, right. but but Len also having been a very a crazy successful comic writer in New York, comic book writer in New York came out to Los Angeles and those those skills don't necessarily transfer, 
but he, crazy successful uh, TV writer. And uh, in the fifth, also, but in the fifth season wrote um, the Captain America X-Men story, which is uh, Old Soldiers is the name of that one. Yeah. And when you approached I, him I about writing, episode, yeah. I love yeah. another yeah. episode. He said, well, I'd be interested, but I, I want to use. Only Captain if I could use Captain America. And ah, our, nice. Yeah, yeah. And, our, <laughs> and, and the, the executive said, well, we don't have the rights. There's some licensing issues. Like yeah. Yeah. Give, him couple, give him a couple of weeks. You know, if it's papers back and forth, maybe cost them a little bit of money, but they said, okay, we've got the right to use them for one episode. So they, did, he's it, they did it for Len. Yeah. Oh, and if you go back and watch uh, two things about the Len Wein story, that going back and watching uh, Old Soldiers, there's a moment where Captain, and I love it because it's it's back in time when we see Wolverine crossing paths with Captain with America Cap, yep. during 19, World War II. 1942 or whatever it was. And I think they're even up against Nazis, for God's sakes, but yeah. they're having to climb a, 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 a precipice. And Captain America hands Wolverine some rappling hooks and they start, and they use them to climb up the mountain. And Wolverine goes, Oh, these are kind of handy. And yeah. the gag was he had not yet received the adamantium transplant. That yes. Oh, yeah. But Wolverine, yeah. Len Wein said his take was Wolverine had the adamantium added. He was not born with the adamantium. You know, not, not, born with claws. Not, not born with born bone claws. So it's like, yeah. Okay, there you go. That's the definitive answer. If you want to know from Len Wein, he didn't, he wasn't born with bone claws. Mm. But also, Len Wein got to take notes from Sidney Iwater once. Oh, Sidney Iwater gave notes on every single script. Our, our buddy, our, our executive at Fox, incredible. found himself in a room with Len. <laughs> and he's going over a script. And, Probably that, Captain America. And he said, wait a minute. Wolverine wouldn't say this. Oh. And he, and he, <laughs> yeah, that's that's how much nerve our boss had. He's a great guy. <laughs> <laughs> he, could, he, he could stick his foot in his mouth. He could say anything. Oh, God. And then Len just kind of paused and you know, scratched his chin a little bit and said, yeah, he would. Yeah, he did. <laughs> <laughs> I would and, know. And that, just, that was it. That was it. Sydney's, so oh, you know, what am I supposed to say to that? Yeah, okay, yeah. next page. The only yeah. time that he shut up. But I love that, that talking to the creator of the character. Yeah. He wouldn't I want, I want, I want to go off um, a, <laughs> a, a toes question a little bit, but just kind of oh. just center it into one character. If you can direct one character, because I know you – both you individuals have directing in your credits that I know. You can direct one character from Marvel or DC or whatever property, it doesn't matter. You can direct one character that you really, or even not even a combo character, somebody that you're really passionate about. Who would oh, you God. how would you who would you direct and why? Are we talking for an animated series or for a live action film or, oh, you, can, or, you, can or anyway. book? you can do a Disney, you can do a, a six episode. Or you can do a movie. It depends on what you feel. You know, like I got, oh, and how okay. would you well, go I about it? Like yeah. I would like to do that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I've, 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 got, I've got one that, that, that is just it's a personal favorite reading the books for me um, as we fade out here. I got to let you guys, it's probably midnight where you it's okay. are. It's okay. It's okay. It's it's not, yeah, we go until midnight. Yeah. 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 So uh, there's a series of books uh, by Patrick O'Brien. Oh, oh. That start they made one movie out of it and they kind of they to my, to my mind it was a beautiful movie they 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 screwed up the the relationship but uh it, they're 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 the maturin uh captain aubrey aubrey maturin books there's master and commander on master the and commander yeah russell crowe's yeah. in it yes yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah russell crowe was in it he was wonderful but those books, there are 20 of those oh books. God. There's 20, 20, 200 page novels. Wow. And the core of the, to them, besides being being realistic from, from 1800 to 1810, about when they're set, about fighting on the high seas, is it's got the best relationship between two guys mm -hmm. in the history of writing, period. Yep. I mean, much better than like Holmes and Watson. There are, it's, it's like, it's well, like, it's like the the world's greatest buddy movie over mm -hmm. over four thousand pages yeah. that this yeah. that this guy wrote before he died, and it, and it's just his name's Patrick O'Brien. If I could do a if I could do a movie about those two characters, about the, mm -hmm. the captain and his buddy, it's like mm -hmm. with Magneto and Xavier. Yeah. they yeah. are completely different people, but they are thrown into adventures together. 
and compliment each other oh, yeah. and are there for each other and would die for each other and almost want to shoot each other sometimes. <laughs> yeah. It's like the best relationship that I ever read in, in the history of, of, of writing. Goose you talk and if, I can do, if I can do a movie with those two guys, I, feel I, would, I would respect it. Okay, nice. and me being a Star Trek freakazoid, I would like to uh, create my own Star Trek series about the USS Optimi, the medical rescue ship that goes out after anything blows up or explodes or has disaster and has to try and fix the various body parts that are floating around. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's okay. awesome. Well, yeah, I made up the Optimi, so please, if it shows up somewhere, let me know because I want to. Oh yeah, yeah. They, they said it here <laughs> first. Yes. <laughs> Look at Netflix and Amazon. It's oh. here. Yeah. Yeah. It's here. That's it. We 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 do this every week, and we got the professionals with us. Make it happen. I, yes. I, I, I love Reach out. I'm, every time I play a video game, I'm always a medic. I say it every time. Oh so my god. I'm always <laughs> the medic. I I like to heal people. I like to help out. That was awesome. I really would like. I'm not exactly a Trekkie. Uh, uh, I'm not exactly into Star Wars either. But that sounds like a cool idea. Yeah, that sounds like I'm a cool idea. That. I'm with that. You, you know, know why? Because you're, you're in the middle of the battle if you're a medic. Oh my yeah. God! You're the you're the <laughs> you don't have a gun. You're the it's, uh, it's, it's it's the <laughs> dude from uh, Saving Private Ryan. Like that. that, that <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. The, the whole yeah, time is just yeah. That's so yeah. good. No. And thank you, thank you so much, guys. Really, oh, really appreciate we, uh, it. Before we let yeah. you go, I have to shout out uh, to my mom when she was alive. She was a big fan of Xena, Hercules, oh Young Hercules. Young Hercules, yeah. Oh uh, I just want for from her to you guys. Yeah. Thank you also for for oh, that. Yeah. Yes. So before okay. she goes out, I want to shout out from a guy that grew up with literally all of you, like going through right sabonics and everything. Um, You've made my child better in my adulthood, yes. even better now that I can enjoy Absolutely. your work maturely. Absolutely. You know what I mean? I can literally look at it and go, oh, my God, I was learning and I was appreciating and I was growing up with this material. It's and timeless. It's literally been a beautiful experience. You are two of the most beautiful creative artists I've ever been around. So thank and you. on top you're of that, you're super cool. You're not dead. That's, that's, awesome. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. awesome. That is true. You guys are literally <laughs> us with no spot of scene that we would have never heard. Yeah. But like from the, from the bottom of my heart, they can make my childhood like so much better. Listen, so much better. You. So much awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Because I you guys were willing to do it. I thank you so much. We love you. Thank you. If we can go back and chat with you again sometime, that would be delightful. Uh, you are always, always welcome. Out. Okay. Always. And, and shame the plug department. Oh, yes, we'll put we'll, we'll put it in the we'll yes. put it we'll put the links up we'll put it in yeah. the chat. So we'll do all, all of that. that. <laughs> 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 Woo, yeah, yeah. She keeps the yes. market. Going. I try. I try. <laughs> hey, yeah. hey, Christmas is coming up. They they make great gifts. Absolutely. Yeah. If you need a cap, <laughs> email us. Okay. <laughs> <All fun intended. laughs> Xmentas92 at Gmail. Yeah, we're on Twitter. We're on Facebook. Try yes. Xmentas oh, for Xmen the Animated Series. Mm. Thank you so much for coming by, guys. Really, really appreciate it. You guys yes, have a great so evening. You. you are always welcome here. Happy oh, you. you are part of the Knucklehead family now. You are always welcome. <laughs> oh, we appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you again so much. This was a oh, lot of fun. Yes, right. this is our pleasure. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye.
It was an yep. intense. I bought some beers and I got lit. So, so Pro goes, hey, I'm going to give you an email. Just go ahead and email them right quick. And, and I'm like, I don't know what he's talking about, but that's my dog. I'll, I'll do it. I'm like, yo, I'm watching football. I'll email them in a bit. And I don't know. What, I didn't know what I was going to email about. I was like on my third beer. I was lit. So I pass out and I wake up. I'm like, shit, I didn't do the thing. And then Toe hits me up like, yo, yo, look who we got. Look who we got. And I'm like, what the hell just happened? <laughs> yeah. I'm, waking, I'm just like freaking chat mouth from drinking all night. I'm like, what the hell? Oh, my God. Dude, yeah. wow. Liter- quite literally, Toe was like, yo, I got the head writer and creator of the X-Men anime series coming on tomorrow. And I was like, what? You're lying. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. yeah. Yo. He put it in the yeah. chat. I'm like, what? Yo, listen, <laughs> what? I'm, I'm at lunch. I'm eating. I'm eating my food and all that. I literally, uh, literally just finished doing something with the LLC. I'm stressed out like crazy. I'm like, let me check my emails. <laughs> and then I get a response. And I'm like, and the first words in it is perfect timing. And I said, you're damn right it is. <laughs> you're damn right it is. And then I, I, I put the voice, the message in the group chat. Which one of y'all coming on tomorrow? <laughs> because I need y'all. Yeah. I I I all once I saw that I was like I'm in. <laughs> oh yeah. Holy shit, man. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. my god, bro. It was funny because right, be- right before that, that happened, bro. We were we're all here. With we're all and, uh, Cho. and Cho was like, Oh, I'm gonna come on because we're doing the tier list. I gotta come on there. <laughs> yeah. Word. Yeah, but oh man, yeah, th- we're definitely gonna have them back. We're Love definitely it. gonna have them back, Love and it. even if it's to talk about nothing, I, I wanna, doing... I, I wanna hear what they have to say. Like once ninety seven comes oh, up, yeah. oh yeah, yeah. hear some of yeah. those stories and shit. Oh, oh. oh yeah. I, 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 I appreciate the fact that they were like, "Yo, listen, you went through some shit to get that done." Yeah. Oh yeah, oh, I yeah. Just, Yo, like, there was, they was real. They was like, "Yo, listen, shit went left." They were yeah. trying to not to have us on. And they, oh, were, yeah. they were cool. They were cool and that lady shit. at Fox, I forget her name, but pro- I, I, I know Margaret, Margaret, Lo- Margaret Loesch. Margaret Loesch, props to you for putting the good fight. Because, but yo, me, she me. was like that. She was like that with everything, Le. Yeah. Like she did the same thing for Power Rangers. Yo, yeah. no one wanted Power Rangers here. Only, mm-hmm. only Saban, uh, Naeem Saban. He, I remember, like, the whole story is he was in Japan one time doing some toy shit and he just mm-hmm. saw. This crazy Power Rangers show over there. He's like, yo, we could do that in America, right? And the yep. only person that would fuck with him was Margaret Loesch. She uh, knew what time it was. She knew what kids wanted. Oh, my God. Yeah. To the billion-dollar lady that understood that yeah. this is going to happen. Yes, you, she understood the assignment. I wish, I, I wish <laughs> through them I want to get her on the show because you, you said childhood's on the right directions. You have made... So many martial artists. I'm gonna tell you right now, because the Mario Power Rangers. I know a lot, a bunch of people that are like yo. I saw this kids. I saw. I watched Tommy or Jason. I watched Zach. Yeah. Do some moves. Trust me. Amazing shit. But we had them, and holy yeah. fuck, Paul. Yeah, you know, yeah, you know, know something like. Bro. I'm be real. Yeah. I was never nervous. I was just fucking too geeking out nervous. Oh yeah, no, yeah, no. Yeah. You you know, you, you know what the crazy shit is. Like I'm happy that Pro sent us the email and I was able to get them and they responded so quickly for y'all because like I told Lay in the beginning of this I will always bet on y'all motherfuckers like I 100% believe that you guys are the best in the business at this shit and to have them on here and then you guys asking them their questions and and knowing what they were talking about when they said some stuff there was something it, I had to look up and you guys just knew it like it this and I'm flowed, like you know it what all, it all yeah. flowed there was no dead air but yep. like. Not only that, yeah, like, it, was. it was them because we got on like two, like ten minutes before, and they got on like five minutes before. Yeah, and they, she was already yeah. like, "Yo, what yep. a great person, yep. we, great people." And it's yep. like we bounced off of each other. Like I say all the time, when I used to, when I used to like sell direct TV and stuff, oh. I used to have to like present perfect calls to like my superiors, and we would like put them in a contest from all sides. Who could bring in the perfect call? And like a perfect call isn't gonna be perfect if the person on the other line isn't perfect. They were perfect. Yes, they were they so were. cool. They were down to earth. Yeah. They were just quirky and cracking yeah. jokes. They got she got more excited than I did. 
<laughs> she yeah. was like junk. Oh my god, it was and, so and, and, and that's that's the crazy shit. The yo, eight o'clock. I'm sitting here. I'm waiting for her to reply Nervous. to me. Yeah. I'm not ner- I'm a little antsy, right? Yeah, yeah. Tap gets on. Me and him are just sitting here. I'm watching Pro do his show. I'm I'm looking up the IMDb. I'm you know I'm not trying to overstudy. I'm just trying to let everything go. You guys get on, and I'm like, yo, listen, they haven't replied yet. You know, they 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 said they wanted to test out the link. Maybe there's something going on. Let's figure it out. Five minutes before the show comes on, they they pop up in the little waiting room that I see, <laughs> and I did the here they go, guys. <laughs> and I was like, in my head, I was like, yes, um, yeah, yes, yeah, because yeah. the one thing I did not want to do was disappoint y'all. And they yeah, came in, real. and she came with energy, and I was like, yes, thank you so much. She and was you energy. Killed it. You motherfuckers Yo, killed I, it, baby. I, I, my team. I, I, she I, was I, energy I, from the beginning. Yeah, yeah. She was I energy from both. the beginning. Yes, I saw I the both, it. and I had it. I had to geek out a little. Bit. I was like, yeah, yeah. I understand that, Eric? I, I, grew, I grew up with you. Yeah, like literally, and you knew the when whole I catalog. Resume, yeah. I like, bro, I literally seen everything you worked on from the ground yep. up. You know what I mean? Yep. Oh, here's a here's a great picture to to motivate me, which uh, I got sent and helped out. That's yes. My lady, my oh, there she, she goes. Watching, <laughs> watching us right now. He's watching. Oh. We were doing us doing our thing. And that's why I was like, yo, the, the questions have to come. Other way, Toe, you murdered it with that question. Man. That's such Ooh. a good question. Yo, Toe, I murdered with that question. Like. So, so, click, on, click on that link so you can see Margaret. <laughs> click on that you link. Can, I sent it in a private chat. I got you. I'm going to show it over there right now. Yeah, so you can, so that's Margaret Loach with the Rangers. Right there. Okay. Right there. Wow. The old yeah. school Rangers. Genius. Yeah, She's yeah, the original. Yeah, yeah. That in the, is that the gold ranger or black? What that's, that the, that's, that's the the gold ranger. That's, gold that's ranger. the gold ranger. Okay. He he was you, black, but the thing was gold. Yeah. Oh, Didn't yeah. um uh Jason D. Frank uh play this yeah, red yeah, ranger? Yeah, yeah. He yeah. took yep, yep, yep. He took yep, over yep. the mantle. Right? Took yeah. over the mantle, yeah. 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 So that that that's her right there. She was yeah. she was all of that shit back in the day. Lady was oh, a, yeah. I, I I learned her story when I watched the story of Haim Saban. And the Power Rangers was like, I saw that shit like five years ago. Bro, that lady took some risks. And she, they, she yeah. just told us now. She put her job on yeah. the line for X-Men. But yeah, I, and she used to just do that. That's one what hell a of a bet call, to take. Man. What oh, a yeah. great call. Yo, Yo you know. The levels, real, fuck, the levels of fuck that he didn't give. Yeah. Amazing. Probably, oh, yeah. That lady's one of the originators of levels of fucks I don't give. I'm just going to do it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Word. Real, real quick. I'm, I'm giving you guys your flowers, but I want to also give Show his flowers because mm-hmm. the one thing that me and Show when we first started streaming was always we're gonna be ourselves, mm-hmm. right? I, I, mm-hmm. I always told Show that I'm gonna be myself. I'm gonna, we're gonna, we have to do our thing. Who we are makes us unique. Mm-hmm. And today, I'm talking to Show, and I'm telling him I saw the podcast and I saw how everybody else did it. And, you know, I got to bring the energy. I got to do that. And he's like, yo, that's what you do, bro. Just be yourself. You know what I'm saying? And, like, it's 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 easy to say but hard to do sometimes. Absolutely. And when you got a team like like we do here in this mother... Ooh, when you got a team, team that you do... That we have here. Because, you know what? I'm going to keep this whole episode without cursing. When you have a team that we have here, it is very easy to be yourself. No matter who is he, like who's behind the scenes or on the camera, we all have each other's back, and I'm happy for us right now that we had to exp- that we got to experience this, and we will experience more to come. Watch, watch those people on other interviews. They were yeah. I've never seen them like that. They were so yeah. excited, they, like we made them feel comfy. Their energy was here. Thank you, yes. Alina. They Thank were, you, Alina. They were, yes. they were hyped because we were. Yeah, hyped because we were. We are fans, first and foremost. You knew your shit, and bro. It. Yes. You know what I mean? You knew well, that. Well, we, I mean, we, we were just... Yeah, I knew your shit. I didn't want to be here unknowing my shit. I'm like, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> no, no, I'm going to watch from afar. Nah. <laughs> like, yo, I when, ain't fucking when, this up. <laughs> yo, when, when Cap said, yo, I can relate to this, and we all said we can relate to that, that's when it hit home. That's when it was like, yo. Yeah, they, they were like, <laughs> they were like, yo. 
these people, these people watch the show. These people yes. watch it, they get it. Like we weren't just trying to do an interview for some likes. No, bro. Like we're doing this interview because we love that damn this show. And y'all wrote you. it. Like you know what it is? Yeah, it's, it's like you say all the time. We the best that the MCU is is in those interpersonal moments. Absolutely. Absolutely. So all of all of the questions and all the moments we picked were the interpersonal moments. Yeah. We didn't ask one question about a fight scene. One no. <laughs> No. Like, how come Wolverine never killed anything except for the son? That we none of that. It was all that interpersonal. Was, yeah, exactly. And and, and it's Shit. funny when when I told them about like you know, like the morph thing didn't really bother me. It was to see Wolverine. Yo, yeah. she lost it. She was like, yo, that like I feel like what? the entire time they were like, yo, that's the that's what we you, were going for. You, you, you know, you know what's crazy? I've seen three podcasts with them on it, and they mentioned the morph thing. I wasn't gonna bring up the morph thing because I was like. You know, you bet it, you beat a dead horse. But when you bring up the Wolverine thing, no one else bring that up. Yeah. yeah Everyone else bring it. up the I, fact that they killed more. Yeah. yeah. It, because it was deeper than rap. Absolutely. Because the I, didn't, most I, didn't, I didn't care about thing. I, I didn't care about Morph. I cared yeah. about Wolverine. The most impactful thing was Wolverine dealing with that loss. Seeing see this, see this rough, yep. tough man Wolverine yep. like breaking and down for this goofy ass character, yeah. yeah. And seeing and Beast locked up in jail at any yeah. moment, being able to break out and going, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna oh, wait, have sure. my day in court. Yeah. And that's the, that's the reason after Cab said it, I go, yo, I love those little moments. Yes. Well, he decks in the stomach, he goes, you don't know what pain is, little man. I go, my man, you're five foot three. I get yeah. it, I get started it. started charging like, yo, you're <laughs> so the time of the team. How he say he gets it? <laughs> yeah, I get it. How you call him? Got it. Man? <laughs> and she said, and it's funny because they said that that's the only time that the team could have done that. They they let that yep. punch slide one time. And yo, that was a common thing. Yo, watch Spider Man the animated series. He wasn't allowed to punch that entire time. Okay. Yeah. No. All you yeah. see, no. Oh, he can he can kick and he can throw, but he can't and punch. Webs. Yeah. You yeah, know who put it, you, the kicking and punching, I think, was exclusive to the yeah. turtles, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. Like, I think they well, could like no, do some stuff. The, origi but, like, the original ones, they always they could mostly throwing. Yeah. Original you know, turtles, throwing. yeah. You know what's funny? Um, the new series of the turtles that happened maybe 10 years, like five years ago, something like that on Nickelodeon, they actually had a show where they integrated, yes. And those original turtles were like, we can't fight, yeah. We're just swinging our, our weapons around like we don't know what to do. <laughs> yeah. And the turtles was like, no, no, no. You went through training. You know what to do. You just weren't allowed to do it. Yeah. Now you can do it. And they, yo, they finally hit people and they're like, yo, this is actually pretty cool. And they beat the crap out of everybody. I tell <gasps> everyone all the time yeah. that is a go. good turtle show, yeah. bro. Yes. Don't let yeah. the nostalgia ruin your experience. That's a good show. And yes. the, mo yeah. the movie that yeah. they did. Um, that they have the original comic book characters in black and white. They yep. have one of the 2000 iterations and one of the and the original iterations. And it's like these other two are like super weak. And the comic book characters are like, what the fuck is up with all of the paint you guys got on your 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 yo? Watch that movie. I forget the name of it, but watch that turtles yeah. movie. It's so good. Yeah. Pro wants to know how we're feeling tonight. We're feeling Whoa. good tonight, Pro. Thank you, yeah, bro. bro. With that the was alley -oop. Alley -oop. With the alley yeah. Oop. I'm feeling oh, accomplished. I'm feeling accomplished, and I'm feeling proud. Yes, because like I I know you guys could do this in your sleep, back to back, and yeah. and, and not directors. for nothing. I feel like we set the standard. Hell yeah! Hell yeah! Hell you know, it's yeah! Funny. I would I. From time to time, I bring up the fact that I was in the room. Kevin Conroy stood next to Stan Lee, but never got to speak. Like this is now one of those moments where it's like, all right, now here's the third, here's the third in the trilogy of yes. comic book moments that I get to speak about. Oh yeah. So oh. I, I, I don't, I don't know how to come off of this. I'm trying, I'm trying to come off of it gently, but it's hard. Yeah. To Scaled down after that, you know what I mean? Like you trying to slowly yeah. come down. Yeah. Like yo, I just spoke to Ooh. to two people that made my whole childhood. Five. Literally, yeah, they both did. It. You know, I felt your that's love, why, your passion. That's why I did I that at the end. I was like, listen, very careful. I listen. I want you to understand that 
I grew up with both of you in an insane yeah. way. And I was genuine. I was like, I was damn near about to cry. Like, yo, I I felt it, bro. Shit, it was crazy, it. man. Yeah. She was yeah. about to cry. Yeah, bro. The way we broke down moment. her show. It's like I, I saw the feeling, like I saw the look oh, in their eyes. Yeah. like, yeah, these these fucking geeks got it. They got it. They understood <laughs> it. Every time she did the whole yeah, yeah, yeah. I was with her, that. I her was like, like, bro, what? like she like I'm, I'm always hype. I'm always doing the hand stuff. I'm always getting up. I'm always shouting. Like she was that. I was like, yo, I could fuck with this lady, man. Oh yeah. Oh, oh, man. Ooh. Oh, yeah, that I was, was just... fun. Yeah. I don't, I don't know yeah, shit and, about and, shit and I felt it, hey, bro. It was yo, so and <laughs> and the chat dope. with the questions on the side and you know them knowing stuff too. It was you know, you know when you when you bring somebody over to the family and like, yo, family, don't embarrass me in front of these people. Y'all no. didn't embarrass us in front of these people. <laughs> yeah. we, didn't, we didn't embarrass yeah. ourselves. Yeah. So, and yeah. you know, you know what the funny thing is when we started and I played the the intro. I don't know if Cap heard me, but I was like, oh shit. Yeah, yeah. The like, I was like, oh shit. I was like, they're gonna see us. They're gonna see us. Funny though. Yeah, she was. I'm, I can see. We didn't. I can see y'all while the. No, we didn't. Watch it. Not, not at all. Yo, I, I, I can see y'all on the side when the intro's playing. Yeah. And I see all y'all, you know, doing your thing. You, you know, should the normal, record it, bro. The Why routine. you have it recorded? I can't record the 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 um the green. Damn, record but the I screen. saw I saw her and him, and they literally did this. <laughs> And yo, they started looking at each other, and he, the, um, Eric was like, and then she just started bawling, laughing, and I was like, we got him, we got him, <laughs> right off the bat, baby, <laughs> we got him. The whole time after that, the whole time I was like this. <laughs> All right, yeah, yeah. Pumping what am up. I gonna say? Yo. What am I gonna say? I was like, I'm gonna stumble on their last name, Cap. You better save me. And I just did the. What's going on, everybody? It's Eric and Julia. Yeah. And Cap saved you. I was like, yes! Thank you! <laughs> so, you know what's funny? I wanted to bring this up. When when they were talking about, you know, the pronunciation of their name, the little video that I did that went up on the TikTok, I watched five videos on YouTube <laughs> to get the pronunciation of their last name. Oh, that's I awesome. Like, I need to get it. That's so awesome. I had it. I had that in the chamber. I was like, I know this now. For a fact. You guys fucking killed it, B. Y'all came prepared. Fucking pop. Oh, I was Question. excited for y'all. Oh, Question, the question started immediately. <laughs> yes. Like, bro. Yo, but they were, I'm so glad that everybody had a poignant question. There was for no sure. like. Absolutely. Word. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. No yeah. bullshit. No show fucking question. Damn. No, I, That's why. <laughs> <It's> final. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, both of my questions were legitly on. Uh, I, I just had to have the throwback questions because I was, I was trying not to geek out the whole time. I was trying not to ask stupid questions the whole time. Like you worked <laughs> on this, worked on my honest yeah. on and I was just trying That's to keep specialty. it to relevant. But I was like, oh man, it's hard yeah. not to do that. You know what I'm saying? When, my I, when I oh. screamed out, "This is for you, Morph!" They lost yeah. it, bro. Yeah, yeah. they lost it. Yeah, they <laughs> and, lost the, it. and the Gene. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, what a I, show! I guess we need some talk about for the forty-seven minutes thirty. What is, what is left to talk about at this point? Oh we, man, yeah, we started so here. Good. We started here. What are yeah, we yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. But we we started at the top. Now yeah, we're here. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> I got I got what a question we... for you guys. Um, what's a what's a tier list a tier list for you guys, man? Because we got to visualize this. Who are some people you guys would like to interview okay. down the line? Okay. Who are some people you guys would like to interview down the line? You down guys got to start visualizing uh, uh, this. Uh, uh, I'm a lot of you. Uh, if we can nail, if we can nail someone from the MC, if, if we can nail anyone from the MCU, oh. yeah, but that's well, not gonna, that, that's you know that's you much. want you want to hear something crazy. Oh, who I fucking up? I fucking emailed the Fahey, you know Kevin Fahey and shit. I emailed the Russo brothers. I, they haven't responded back to me, but I emailed all these motherfuckers. I emailed fucking um, and there you go. I just oh, broke the. I just broke the. 
the, the, I wasn't going to curse cursed. the whole episode. Yeah. I emailed oh, Neil deGrasse you, Tyson. I emailed Neil deGrasse Tyson so he can talk to us about the MCU and how they did time travel <laughs> and, and quantum I physics remember. and all that. I emailed him. Yes, I e- I was about to email Bill Nye the science guy, but I couldn't find his email. He'll, he'll, Matthew, probably, he'll probably pull up. Bill yeah. will probably pull up. Mess with me. Yo, I emailed Gary V. Oh, that's my guy. If you could get Gary V. Yeah. Bit, he's, he's just so busy. Yeah. Gary and, and, V is talking to social media or in front of crowds the entire day. My man gets no time. Yeah. No TV shows, hey. nothing. Yeah. I mean, like, I'll email whoever. We got to go to him. We got to go to him. I emailed the wrestler ah. and, and I, I even offered to twerk for her. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Bro. Yo, I, but who would you guys want to talk to? I can't I can't answer that. There's like it's like how do you how do you answer that? Because yeah. of course yeah. there's a million people you would like to, but you gotta try to be realistic. Like, all right, who else can we build off of now? Who else can we uh I honestly personally me just being real selfish? I have someone God, God Evans. That's the guy that wrote the, the Punisher Max series. Ooh, the the right. one that I completely fell in love with the Punisher with. And Ooh. he also uh, did the boys. So it'd be him. I I, I, I have I want to get in that twisted mind of his. Because he can't get an email when he wrote it. I have a real one. It. And I think I think I think realistically, um, he would pull up the voice of Metal Gear of, of Solid Snake David Hader. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah, I want to. Yeah, that'd be that'd be. Yep, that would be. Uh, 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 that now that Metal Gear Solid like changed my outlook on a lot of things in life, bro. That game that was a I moved on to a different chapter in life after that game. I know people hear me say that, like, how can a video game change your life? Oh, that video game changed my life. And David Hader was like, number one, it was upsetting that he wasn't. Uh, able to do Big Boss's voice in Metal Gear 5. It's very disappointing. Kiefer Sutherland did a great job, but money. I need David Hayter. I need David. Nah, man, it wasn't money, man. That guy loves that character so much, he would have taken a pay cut to do that shit. It was, there was a lot of funny, funky things going on with Konami at the time. But yeah, that's one of my legit David Hayter. Okay, okay. And and you know, it seems re- it seems realistic. Like, he'll pull up. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. To Cavs, I tell you this point. You know what changed my life? Right here. Well, yeah. <laughs> right here. He said, well, right yeah. Right here. Duh. Yeah. Welcome back, Frank. Make right. no mistake about it. this change. You guys were you guys were a match. We were match made in heaven, you and the Punisher. <laughs> what happened? Like, you guys were a match made in heaven, you and the Punisher. Like, like Led didn't, like... The Punisher just like, didn't mold Le. Like Le was who he was. Pulled up to the to the Punisher, found out who the Punisher was, and was like, "Yeah, fucks with this guy." It was really like a, a match. You Yo, remind me. It of was me. like the Punisher was like, "Hey, you too? And Le yeah. was like, "Yeah," and they were like, "Yeah, we're friends now." <laughs> yeah. that's and that's kind of how that's kind of how me and Captain America are too, which is yeah, funny. There, we, there you go. You see, Cap gets you. Hey, that's things. one of those things where that's that's how me and Howard the Duck do it. <laughs> you are no Howard the Duck, sir. <laughs> don't I wouldn't I wouldn't don't disrespect yourself like that. So what's, what <laughs> is, that? is that? Is that lemonade? Homemade, lemonade? Homemade for the chinos? I just happened to find this big ass cup with some ice oh, in it. Oh gotcha, gotcha. Because you know they have the, the Chinese food place, yeah. they have the homemade ones. Probably which are yeah. delicious. Freaking now it's gonna be in this. Nice. When I'm on the podcast, is this now? I'm starting. What's that? Organic water? <laughs> That's a Black Panther. Oh. Organic water? Yeah. I mean, if yo, I, I was, Wakanda, yeah, Wakanda, Wakanda like probably has great water. If, if, if right. I had the heart, a heart shape no more. here, I would take it all day. <laughs> oh, yeah. But uh, for now on, it's going to be it. It's going to be a thing. That's dope. So, so like, I guess in our group, that makes you the best collector of Wakandan gear. Huh? Yes. Yes, what kind of artifacts? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Give me at this guy. <laughs> that guy. Give me that guy. 
<laughs> I'm committed. It's on. It's on. It's on the body. Yeah, I don't know if you guys oh, saw, but uh, Mimi, put- you son of a bitch, I heard you. Who said? Who called you a colonizer? Oh, well, somebody did. Between the lines, <laughs> it must have been show. Bro, Hold fuck on. you, Mama. Wait, 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 that's me. Out of, wait a out minute. Of everybody, <laughs> out of everybody in this panel, I don't, I don't there's only one enough. guy, no. and I'm not pointing any fingers. There's only one guy who could be who could be mistaken <laughs> for a colonizer. That's right, true. Hey. There's only one guy that could use that word. What is that? True. It was it was me. I don't even know how to use that. A colonizer. What is there? You go. You just said it. Mad it's racist enough. too. Because I heard you. I say it. I don't count. <laughs> All right, so I, it's funny. I, yep. I, 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 there was a question there that I had that because I got so lost in being geek that I could not ask it. All right, so now there's a whole new phase in the Marvel Universe, right? And DC is by, by, by as well, by the way. So yes. I ask you fellas, all of you, I love this because it's, it kind of stretches the boundaries. In both MCU and DCU, or whatever the fuck they call it now, I don't know what they call it now. I want you to pick a OP character, a shoe level character, to make both a movie in a in a uh, what is it? I know I can say a Disney series. A, a what the series? fuck is there? Um, an HBO Max HBO series. Max series. Thank you. Thank you. There you go. I want you to pick one of each. So for DC and and uh, Marvel and Marvel, but okay. I want you to expand it to a series, especially. Okay. Let let let. I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna ask a favor. <laughs> when you have these questions, let me let me get like a day in advance, brother. So oh. I can write something down. <laughs> like the question of the day is a voice exercise. You know what I'm saying? You be making me go to school, bro. <laughs> let me. I got you. Yeah, we had a voice exercise through the yeah. whole podcast. Yeah yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So, not for nothing, if we was going to do a question a day with them, I would have been like, yo, what's your most guilty pleasure meal? That was my go to. So that's, a, that's a good way to just learn about someone. Yeah. Yeah. So, OP, now, OP character, street character. Now, OP, right, so the, street level. Because the reason I pick street level is because both Cabs and myself are love massive fans of street level. Love it. Love it. You can do this. Can I pick, can I also I pick one girl? Cap. Loves Captain America and he's literally street level in both. He can balance both. Yeah, that's why it's unfair. You know what I'm saying? And <laughs> I'm mostly this is mostly challenging Cap above everybody else. Oh yeah. Right. So for Marvel, can I pick one guy for both? Yeah, of course, of course. No limits. No, no. limits. Where is it? Norn Red, Silver Surfer, OP character for the movie, but start off. Street level for the series on everything that happened on this planet before Galactus mm-hmm. gets there, all the way up to Galactus, taking him, making him Silver Surfer. Then we get the movie. That's why I did it, you son of a bitch. I like that. Fucking Cap, do what Cap does, son of a bitch. Yo, you know what's funny? I had because sometimes we bring up like pitching ideas and all that. Yeah, I had a pitch for an episode. For the X Men animated series, if somebody had brought that up, yeah, I have one in the pipe ready to go. Well, yeah, you know what's funny? Okay. That's a, that's another thing we got to do, like a a tier list of how to start a Marvel series or DC series or a movie, even like like sometimes because we bring up great ideas. We've all done it before, all of every us every time, every mm-hmm. time, right? Yep. Like yo, I yep. still yo to this to this day. I still want to do the what what Cap to this said. day. Cap said is do the Wayne family only Wayne shit. Yeah, holy shit, do I want to do that? Because I find that just so hilarious. Like the Joker texting Batman. Oh, you're not gonna answer me now. I want that. I want that so bad. I so bad. Yeah, I want that so bad. But anyways, so, like, it's, it's I got my DC guys. of ideas. A tier list of ideas. You know what I mean? No matter yeah. how big or small. You know what I mean? Like I would love to have um. Krill's on it because Krill's a massive Spider-Man fan. Oh, yeah. yeah. So to see Krill's come up with an idea, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Would be great. Yeah. You know? But yeah. So I got my DC guys. Okay. So the HBO Max series will be oh. off of uh, Wildcat, 
Ooh, nice. And damn it, you stole mine, son of a bitch. <laughs> and the, the, o, the OP movie, it's a little obscure, Mr. Miracle. Okay, you just mentioned the murder. Oh, too, yes. The escape artist. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm okay. there's, there, yo, there's things you could do with Big Berta and Apocalypse and just all his whole shit. It's intergalactic. You can allude mm-hmm. to Dark Side without ever having to put him in. Yeah, it can be yeah. like we said before, like like in, in our interview, it's like off screen shit. Like he's yep. there, but he's not there. Yep. Right. So I, I have one for, for Marvel. It will be uh, Thor and Iron Fist. Nice. Where the movie would be um, a war between Kung Lao and, and uh, Asgard. Asgard. But the, the TV show would be about getting Kung Lao back from the dictator that, that, that took control of it. Because apparently, like, let's say there's an Asgardian that went to Kung Lao and took over with his powers. Maybe Loki, you know, because he's never dead. You know what I'm saying? And it's now it's Iron Fist and Thor trying to, you know, cut the restraints that they put on on uh, Kung Lao. That'd be the TV oh, show. Oh my god, nice. that's good. Nice, nice, nice. Honestly, um, honestly, I don't have anything. I'm, I'm, I'm like I'm, I'm, I'm excited, bro. Like I'm yeah, just, no, yeah. I just keep, I just keep thinking about what just happened. Like you know what I'm saying? We've had people the, the, here before, yeah. you know. Like and, and we've done a few interviews, and you guys have interviewed some pretty cool wrestlers too. But yeah, man, no, no, was, I'm excited. That was, that was so the nice. only thing going through Cavs head right now is yes, yes. Look at me, like I'm like yo. That shit was crazy, man. Yeah, no, I'm still excited off of that. I'm not. I'm not even gonna lie. That, I'm not. I'm not sleeping yeah. tonight, like for real. Yeah, I got two shows. Uh, okay, go for it, for, please. For DC, uh, this I'll is what Let really. The... This is what Let really wants. Yes, <laughs> this is what Let really. This this question was designed for one person. Sure. Wait, wait, forget everybody else. Me up, bro. For DC, right. I'll start with a six series. Uh, about Superboy Prime. Oh, uh, I want to figure oh, out if he's I'm a strong DC character. Okay, I'm with that. I like that. All right. For the movie, I'll go, and it's gonna be simple. I'll go kill manga because I want to know, like, I want to see like a story into the dark side of Wakanda, not that, not the saving, just. Like, I want to see if they drift off into that dark side with him. Maybe with okay. a little bit of Shuri. He can entice Shuri with the gold, black and gold. You know, she's she's part of him. She might be able to convince her, yo, run with me. I don't know, something weird. I saw some uh, I saw some rumors. You had me with like... Superboy Prime, by the way. Yeah. That, you pull that shit out of your ass. I'm with that. For real. <sighs> I'm with, yo, say no more, bro. That was a good one. I like that one. Uh, now is he is he the strongest though? He's uh, you know what's funny, he's held as. You know, but it depends. You can never be Superman. Whatever. Hey, I mean, Superman. wait a minute. Is it isn't he Superman Prime too? Isn't it the same? No. Well, it's the the way Superman works in the comics is each writer gives him some ability that nobody else put or they add back in or basically you can mold him to whatever you need him to be for whatever story you're telling. He Perfect. he was originally faster than a speeding bullet, able to leap tall buildings in a single bound, uh, stronger than a locomotive or something like that. Those were his power sets. And then he just became more and more evolved because that's what they needed him to be <clears throat> to fight the people he was fighting. Gotcha. True. So... Um... What I would do with um, Cabs, you got one? So you're researching? Yeah. <laughs> I'm still here. Yeah. So we're on, on the Marvel side. That's <laughs> Cabs movie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so like, I can't side, think. I can't I have, think, I have, bro. I have two options. The first one, the first option is a, it's a series, right? The series follows um, Domino. Okay. Donald does her missions. It's six episodes, and they're really interesting. She Hulk, 
You're interesting. <laughs> <laughs> it's never going away. Like, no one take about it. It's never going away. I'm the guy doing it. I'm keeping it. Me and Toa keep it going. Uh, final. And in the movie, <laughs> it's going to be um, Taskmaster, the real Taskmaster. Focus on it. But they're intertwined. Okay. At one point, Domino's going to be recruited to kill Taskmaster. Taskmaster is going to be recruited to kill Domino. That's how come together. So there you go. Marvel, you're welcome. I did it for you. Yep. There you go. There you go. I'm I'm gonna give Cabs more time. Uh Vin playing the theme just came up with a new uh Disney Plus sure. series. Sure. A live action retelling of how the Lee Walls and the other people involved made the X-Men the animated series. Give there us a go. live okay. action look behind the curtain, all those stories and all that shit. Can That's I good. make mine? Good. Can I hey, can I make can I make mine more like a, a comedy? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, okay. As long as you don't get the writers to do did she hope you came up with the D with the bad family. I'm always comedy. Yeah. That's what bro, it is. Yeah. Like bro, you, came up with the bad yeah. you just can can't I, hire can the I, people who did she hope it. and we'll find it. So can I do can I do like a can I do like a buddy cop? Uh, kind of comedy with Hulk and Deadpool, oh and like God. so. They, so 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 the thing is, so the thing is, Deadpool is not, he's not sick, not losing his powers, but like he's feeling a little sluggish, and you know, he kind of gets Hulk to like help him move around throughout certain areas of the city. To like just ask questions. Like he's literally like just riding Hulk. Like, hey, jump over there. I have to ask somebody this. Jump over there. I have to ask somebody that. And within six episodes, we try to get him fixed. Like we 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 find out what's wrong with him and we get his shit back. And then he's just fine again. I mean, don't get me wrong, Deadpool is kind of OP, but he's 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 street level though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like he he sticks to the ground. But yeah, that's I, I would make it funny. I would make a funny TV series. Six episodes. Let's find out what's wrong with uh, with with Deadpool. The, the same way you did the episode uh, for Tone the Show show. What's wrong with show? <laughs> we yes. didn't do that, but for Deadpool. <laughs> there you go. I needed some time. I needed some time. Nah, hey, genius. So, um, my uh, now on the DC side that just did Marvel. I I, I want to. I like to tie in both TVs and movies. Makes sense, right? So, yep. so I want Century, right? He develops, he breaks into the place, Super Soldier Serum. But when he breaks into the place, the first person he runs into, whoa, above everybody else, he looks at him, he goes, You? And it's Bucky Barnes. Bucky goes, What are you doing in here? He goes, the, Like an addict. That's what they do. Flies off and Bucky goes, what the hell was that? He comes back and he realizes after years, Bucky's literally in the middle of the Thunderbolts that we're doing now. Right now, Bucky goes, yeah, years ago, uh, some dude broke into a lab and said something. I didn't, I, I, never, I remember him. He comes back down and he goes, shit, that's it. They say, yo, we need a we need a Hulk. Red Hulk. He fails. We need another Hulk. World World Hulk. Okay. Okay. Shit. I have one. I have a DC have, one. After you go, I have a DC one also. But okay. I have a DC one. I'll so go after gonna, you too. So we're hey. gonna put we're gonna put Flash and mm. Batman and Batman together, right? And like, <laughs> this is gonna be a movie, a good, a, 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 this is gonna be a comedy as well. This is gonna be like a, a a heartfelt movie where Batman is just like going to certain places with Flash and just like cheering him on, like you know, like he takes him to like 
uh, uh, he gets. What's that episode in, in one of the? I forget which one of the DC shows is it that like Flash is getting the key to the city, and he's like, "Hey, Batman, I oh, think it'd be really nice." If, yeah. Batman and Orion go to his place. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And he's like, he's like, yeah, and he's that. like, "Hey, Batman, it'd be it'd be pretty nice if you showed up." And Batman's like, "Give me the address, man. I'll pull up." So just he's like just going certain places with like Flash and just like 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 taking them like ice skating. And like taking them to like just just being proud of Flash, but in that same regard, Bruce kind of gets to be a parent, so he kind of like deals with some of his shit on the low as well. Where it's like, hey man, you know maybe I should look, you know, you know care like maybe I should look at my parents' legacy a little different. You know now that he kind of gets to be a parent for the day. Yeah, two okay. comedies, two comedies. Nice, nice. All right, so my DC one is uh, Amanda Waller oh, shit. and John Stewart. Oh. Where Ooh. she effectively tries to infiltrate the Green Lantern Corps. Which, yeah. And that would be the movie. Oh, which, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would be the movie. Her okay. and her team would try to infiltrate the Green Lantern Corps to, to get the power of the Green Lantern. The TV show would start at the end of the movie where they detained... Um, uh, Waller, and that series will be the court session in which she has to defend herself in the Green Lantern thing. Oh. So she will be on trial in the Green Lantern court. W- would you call that a lawyer show? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and we're gonna and to keep the green, we're gonna get the writers of She Hulk to do the lawyer show. <laughs> We could get and the we could get comedy the, in there. We could get the lawyered up guy. Yeah. He knows the, the stuff. blind. Yeah, the blind one. We'll get the blind one to be in this one. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, show. I got two two simple ones. Uh, we already seen Black Adam, so I would love a uh, like a little series about Shazam, so we could get to know the opposite. Okay. Of Black Adam. And I wouldn't mind a Shazam series. Yeah, me neither. And another series, uh, instead of a movie, uh, what about Blade? Would you guys watch a Blade series? See, uh, yeah, I watch anything Blade that you want to well, give me right now. It got to be a Marvel Blade because that that uh, the Blade they did the last time, I didn't even look at that. With the guy from uh, the Italian job that, that was jerking off. Hey. <laughs> yeah, 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 him. Yeah. I have, yo, I forgot. Yo, when Les said that shit the other day, I was like, yo, I forgot. Please put up a picture of Sticky Fingers as Blade, bro. <laughs> please, please. Just so. Oh, my God. Oh, Lord. Oh Lord! Look at look yeah. at Toe's face. He found gold over there. <laughs> Before he shows it to us, he's dying. Yo, Yo. While, while he's doing that, can I pitch you guys real quick what what my episode for the uh, animated series would have been? <laughs> <laughs> that says it all. Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait! I have please. Okay. The one right next to the, yeah, that one. Oh, uh, oh, and they always need the white girl. Oh, shit. Look, that looks like a bad Halloween outfit, bro. Yeah, cosplay as Blade Yo. and whoever she is. I never I watched this. Sh- I never watched this show, and I'm glad I did it. I forgot Dude, this shit existed. I, I actually, got a I actually heard. I actually heard from quite a few people that the show wasn't bad. I don't know, man. Mm. Anything with sticky fingers to me is bad. Were the rapper? I'm sorry. I man, mean, that I, look like you, a, know, you know what? I want to watch this. Shit looks like a cover of a mixtape, bro. Yeah, that that look like you, remember, you, remember, you. you remember when 50 and Who Kid used to do the G Unit radios? <laughs> this looks like a G Unit radio cover. <laughs> 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 Is that his stunt double? What's happening here? Yo, no, double, I'm gonna, I, I, I'm gonna watch it bigger than him. That's I'm gonna watch him. a few episodes. I'm gonna watch a few episodes just to see what's up. Look at this the, the originator that, and the impersonator. That's the blade. 
Ooh. Oh, Lord. oh, that guy back, B. He still got it. There I'm, you gonna go. wa- I'm gonna watch him. <laughs> well, no, that yeah, that has to. All right, my bad, my bad, my bad. Yo, Cap, that was, yeah, that was what cosplay. Were you that was say, Cap? yeah. You go ahead, gonna... No, I'm just saying that I wanted to throw out my idea for one of the episodes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. So this goes off along the lines of what they were saying. It's like not holding back, not dumbing shit down. There's a character called Forget Me Not. And his mutant ability is literally, he's imperceivable. So unless you're looking and talking directly to him, you don't see him there. You don't remember him being there. You don't hear him. Nothing. So you can literally talk to him. And as soon as you turn around and you don't, you're not looking at him, you forget that you that conversation existed. You forget he was standing there. That's his whole deal. And the episode would start off with Professor Xavier talking to him. And he's sitting there saying, like, yo, I don't feel like I've been a member of this team. I don't feel like I belong here. Nobody in the world can see me except for you, Charles. I don't know what to do. And the whole the episode is going back and any any plot holes we where people are like, yo, how did they do this? If everybody was here, how did they get out of this? We go back and we show that it's been forget me not. He was there. He's the one who did that. But as the audience, we are also affected by his mutant ability. We haven't seen him. Exactly. Yeah. And the wow. whole point of the the whole point of the episode is for anybody who doesn't think they're being seen or doesn't think they have an impact, they do have an impact. They are, uh, you know, adding something to the environment that they're in. And we end the episode with Aurora and Cyclops looking out there and. Like, who is Professor X talking to? And Aurora's like, oh, he's just out there, you know, doing his meditations like like he normally does. Like, they don't even know he's talking to Forget Me Not. And it ends with us not even being able to see him standing there talking to Professor X. That's Man. dope. Yeah, that's that's like some that's like a thriller. It layers on layers yeah, on like layers. A, it's like a thriller. Yeah. yeah. See? We, yo, you call us a brawling Bruce because we just giving you bangers after bangers after bangers yeah. after yeah. bangers. Legit. But yeah, man. Yo, I, listen. I, I, I have yeah. one last one. Yeah. Lady Shiva and Busa Gold body comedy. Yes, yes. I, you yo, know me, Lay. You know I like that shit. Yo, you know what's funny about that? That's a will she, won't she, but will she, won't she kill him? Yo, Absolutely. I have, I have one DC, the Joker and Lex Luthor, Joker and Lex Luthor, Lex Luthor, in a room, a torture rack? talking uh, talking about uh, their ideals. Basically, why the Joker wants to kill Batman and why Lex Lu- Lex Luthor wants to kill Superman, and they all calling each other on their bullshit. It's Ooh. just a conversation. That's, that's oh, good. Shit. I like that. I like that. I have, I have, I have something that kind of just came up when, uh, when Cap was just talking. I needed to look up something, but I'm thinking of. All right, so this is a little bit more serious. So I get the, so I get the Purple Man, right? So I get the Purple Man to take over. You know, like to kind of like do his whole thing on some low level street like not low level but some like street like female maybe like electra or something okay but he ends up putting his like you know spell on her and she starts doing a whole bunch of bad stuff and he, and she just kind of loses it and she starts going off destroying everything and the purple man needs to hit up matt and they have a little uneasy alliance 
trying to stop Electro from going all crazy. Like, it's beyond the Purple Man's control at this point. He's messed mm -hmm. her up so bad that she's just prime evil. Like, there's no stopping her. Electra is, you know, Electra is Electra. She is dark. But it's gone so overboard, the mind control, that it's not even that anymore. And she's just like, she's just seeing red. Yeah, yeah lock something in her. Yeah, yeah, my yeah, name, exactly. My name, my friend. He he bought something yep. out of her, and he needs to hit up Matt, and both of them needs to have a little uneasy alliance to try and stop Electra from yo, going crazy. Yep. Dude, you just yo, I love when we get into things like this because you just get traded it. something. Get it, me. get it, get it. He did this. So this happened with Eddie Brock, right? Mister Negative touched Eddie Brock and turned Venom into Anti Venom. I want to see what happens or what would happen in this weird scenario where Mr. Negative touches Cletus Cassidy Oof. and changes the Carnage symbiote reverse into something good. And watch Ooh. a maniac on the side of goodness. Ooh. Where it's not like Frank Castle where, all right, at least what he's doing can be this tolerable is, to certain people. This, this is very goodness in him. Maniac. Yeah. Who's now like, oh, I can help you guys. <laughs> that would be something where you're like, oh, okay. Like it, it's like the it's like the rev, like the opposite of cringe almost, where it's like, I, I don't think what? I like see, I don't think I like seeing you nice like this. You know, what? yo, Mr. Negative, that kinda, put a shit back, put a shit back. Wouldn't that kind of be like Deadpool? No, because I'm told Deadpool is Deadpool. He's not a bad person. He's, He's just like, yeah. I'm talking about Cletus oh, Cassidy. Right. Didn't like so Eddie Brock didn't change. The Venom symbiote changed. Yeah, because it went from giving him cancer to helping him out and actually helping his cells and curing him and all that. So mm -hmm. I'm talking about the symbiote inside of Cletus Cassidy is now exerting more control, and Cletus goes, oh. So you're telling me that killing is bad, but killing them is good. Yeah. So I get to do all the killing I want. It's just guy got to kill it's them. It's done from the from the view uh, the vantage point of a psychotic person who's like, oh, I just found a playground that I could play in. I, I got a loophole. <laughs> that is good. Yeah. Yeah. That is good. That, that's compelling. Yeah. yeah. That, is that is that's a story. Is that, Cause then you gotta yeah. see like Spider Man. Spider Man saved the bad guy from him. It's like we yeah. don't kill everyone. Exactly. Like he spoke to this person two weeks ago. <laughs> 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 Just killing everybody. <laughs> killing all the bad guys for no reason. Right. Now that that scenario where you just said with Spider Man trying to now save villains and all that make would make more sense than. The Justice Society showing up and going, "Hey, I know they're occupying the country, but geez, man, can you not? Like <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You're killing one too many people." <laughs> so, correct me if I'm wrong. Is there you, a buddy. Batman, uh, a, a Batman type of person like that, ruthless? You know what I want to see? Y'all, I think it's weird. In DC, Nightwing yeah. and Brainiac, like the like, they're like Nightwing. Been raised by Batman, right? But he also he's also very optimistic. But then Brainiac's logic to a Nightwing. Right, bro. Good night, Nightwing is looking up, bro. Uh, an intel. Good night, bro. You know what I'm saying? I like. I, I yeah. want to see that. I want to see the Batman logic, but also with Nightwing's optimism, mixing with Brainiac. You know what I mean? Like I'm gonna take you across the universe, and I'm gonna show you. What happens with your master's logic and how you can fix it? Oh, that's cool. Well, multiverse work there. Yeah. So, for your question, Victor Zaz would be uh, DC's version of Cletus Cassidy. Mm -hmm. Without the alien symbiote stuff. Yeah. Yeah. He's, I, so, he's, just, he's just nuts. <laughs> doesn't he doesn't he like he marks himself per like death for every or, victim, or, yep. per kill? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Absolutely. He's a psycho. I don't. I don't. It's not. It's not even kill. It's every victim. Oh, okay. 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 I thought it was kill. So, no, I got it. There's some. Okay. There's some stories who the death did his victims wish he would have fucking killed them. Damn. Mm. He get they they get him messed up. Shit. Yeah, Victor Saz is wild. Yeah, I gotta look him up. So I I got a question for show. I know you asked one in the in the chat, but what would have been a question you would ask our guests? That's a good question. Honestly, after what you you asked, bro. Nobody could ask shit. You fucked it up for everybody. <laughs> yeah, you motherfucker. <laughs> you did drop the mic on that question, and Word. they were so they were so put on the spot that they couldn't even answer it. But they tried yeah. their best. That I did that on purpose. I know, I know, I know. You you said it like, yo, yeah. I'm gonna put you on the spot, yo. That yeah, was, that really was a good question, man. I would have asked them if there's something they're writing that they could talk about that's coming up. Maybe they have. I... New, new, new stuff that they yeah. might be thinking of. I don't know. Maybe, but they can't be able to talk about that. Yeah, because they, yeah, there was, there was, there was some stuff that they told us before the the podcast yeah. that uh, they had like a you know, do not you know disclose. Yeah. Um, yeah. For, you know, for what they were working on, but you know, yeah, yeah. See, I, I, that's what I'm saying. I would have fucked it up. I knew it. Look though, look, 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 look though, look though. They knew they knew a lot more than they were letting on though. Cause look, I'm, oh, yeah. I'm look, this is on screen rant, and it was February 2022. So L LRM online reports the producers of X-Men 97, Eric and Julia Luwald, revealed an episode count and a release date window for the upcoming show. So they know what's up. Mm -hmm. they, they gotta know what's up. Obviously, you consult obviously you consult those two about that show, and then of course. Yeah, like, like you put them on. Like, there's no other way around. If you want to make a continuation, then you gotta talk to them. Yeah. So, so they after like like after everything was said and done, they said that they he um David he said he had some like extra stuff lingering around where you could bring some people, maybe go back into space again. So it's gonna be fun. So there's and and now now they, there's no time crunch there's so much technology like i think they're gonna make a banger of a show bro i think that's just gonna be nuts and we and we've we've been excited but after today's episode yeah maybe i'm more excited for sure yeah no i'm not gonna lie i am also i am way more excited for that show now i was always excited and that was always gonna be a day one watch but man like, yo, this is a continuation, and they're going to be overlooking? Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Yeah, man, they're all over the internet with that shit. So they knew what was up, but obviously they can't talk. And and I wasn't going to pry either. Yeah. No, nah, I was dope. No, I'm not trying to I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to. Yeah, make them uncomfortable yeah. disrespect. Because, like, a lot of interviewers do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. yeah. They could feel comfortable to come back and say whatever they want and I feel like we gonna be pushing buttons where they don't want to be pushed. Yeah, I gotta go cop that I book. I it. gotta go cop the book previously. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, gotta, I gotta I gotta cop that now. Yeah. Seriously. Yo, uh, I would also ask is there, cause she she, she mentioned she loved WandaVision. Is there is there a show that she f would have felt she could have did better? Ooh, like is that, there a show that, that, that would have been a good question that she saw yeah. and she's like, oh my god, I could have did that. Oh. I could have did it this way. That's it. Yo, the nerd in me wanted to ask, and they probably couldn't answer, but wanted to ask why my boy Warpath was in the opening credits, but never <laughs> actually in a show. But I was like, you know what? I was like, we're wait. I was like, we're getting to deep, poignant stuff. I don't want to bog down with with that, you know, little I could have been the icebreaker. I could have been the icebreaker. I don't know. My icebreaker was staying quiet until I can find a spot to jump in. With cabs, 
Yo, I gotta commend you, man. You right out the gate. You you were on point straight out the gate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll be. I'll, I'll put on. I'll put on the. Uh, I'll put on the phone attitude when the when it, mm-hmm. when it's interview time. That's hey, essentially this, this that's bro. essentially what I do all day, bro. I just interview people on what they want to cruise on, and then I just sell them a cruise. Yep. This, this is this is what I told y'all in the group chat. It's like I'm gonna start this shit with some high energy, and then I need y'all. <laughs> you know y'all what I'm saying? Then let's, let's get the it. Ball. Yep. I'm looking. Yeah. I'm look. I'm looking. These two, like, if you Google them, they're man. They're such cool people. They do a lot yeah. of like low tier, like you know, podcasts. There's there's a few of them that I'm seeing, like 80 views. Yeah, ninety views. But they views. never felt the way they felt here. It yeah. doesn't look like it, bro. It, you got them from the intro, bro. But they're they're just they're. I gotta they're, watch that. They're a they're a, a really nice. They're just Let nice people, back, man. Baby. Look at this. They're yeah. so nice. They go back. Yeah, Agreed. today was awesome, and I'm happy that all y'all was able to make it. Yeah, man. These people are so nice. They're so fucking nice. That's dope, man. I hope y'all get to meet more nice people. For Everybody's real. smooth like that. Word. Yo, um, real quick, Mimi tagged us in a story she put up of the screenshot of you yeah. know the and she goes, she said, Yo, just tell us to shut up whenever you need to talk. And we're all like, No, 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 no. You yeah. talk. <laughs> Mom, when I asked you talk. That, when I asked him that question, I was like, yo, you know, like a lot of people deem this the show that was never supposed to work. You know, what was the biggest obstacle? He said, Yo, how much time you got? I'm like, fam. That's why I asked. I'm trying to fill 12. up some time. <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm trying to at least get y'all till 11 o'clock. At least. So yeah. Go ahead and talk, bro. And, and you know what's crazy? I was looking at the clock the whole time. Time was flying. Yes. Hello? Yo, like I checked. It was oh. 9.15. Then it's 9.30. Then it's 9.55. I said, yo, like it was just flowing, man. Damn. Flowing fun. Uh, yeah. I felt, yeah. Yeah, the, yeah they did great, man. Listening to it uh, flowed pretty good as well as a listener. And it wasn't like, this is boring or this is, oh, this, yeah, I need to move it along. Nah, yeah. if it, it was the same for us. It's 9 15. Like, Dead air. Oh, shit, it's 10 30. Damn. Nope. Dead it's air 11. did not exist, bro. No. Nah, nah, it was perfect. Maybe a little bit. Nah. Wow. Word. And, uh, yeah, yo, I. Any yeah, any final thoughts before we call it a do? Yeah, just one more time. This is one of the situations where it's like being military. You learn that the you hope and pray that in a certain situation you have the right team around you. This is one of those times we had the right team. For sure, fellas. This this was. One of the greatest experiences ever. Hell yeah! yeah. Right. I, mean, I, mean, I can't sure. think, bro. I'm telling you, like I'm just, I just got that shit in I'm, my mind. I'm, like I'm, I'm gonna I'm get trying. off and pace around my living room for like 15 yeah. minutes, bro. Like I'm, you know, I'm trying, I'm trying to process the fact that I was with somebody that I was able to watch from my childhood. Their 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 creativeness. That's crazy. Literally, that's like, crazy. I went through it. Like, bro. From Bionic Six to, I don't, I don't even know how to express. I don't know how to express that. It's like, I spoke yeah. to both individuals, and they laughed at what I said, and they expressed interest, and they literally heart, they heart, felfully said, "We're so happy we brought that to you." Like I'm that, watching the, I'm watching these really podcasts. Really- I I'm watching these podcasts that they did with other bro. I'm watching these podcasts they did with other people, and like they wasn't as bouncy and excited, bro. Like, whatever. I'm not gonna say anything. They didn't nah, know man. shit. Like, yeah, they, I don't know. Look at them shits, yeah, bro. The, killed it, bro. Man. They Look mentioned shit. I think it, it felt like they was testing y'all. They would mention stuff that I never heard. Oh yeah, cause cause uh ex uh fucking Wolverine had a bionic or something. Y'all would be right there with them. I seen it. I was in the I books. The yep. word. And, I was like, and, shit. They the did. crazy thing is when she's describing certain parts of certain episodes. I knew in it. my head it was like, 
I remember watching that vividly. Yes. Oh, yes. Man. I know I exactly it. what you're y'all talking wasn't about. Yep. I felt it. Y'all ain't bullshitting. Y'all did. I remember. I remember when when Beast was locked up in jail yep, and Storm yep. and Rogue went to go lock up to, to get him out. And he said, no, no, I'll have my day in court. Don't worry about it. I'll be all right. And then they would visit him from time to time. I remember all that. And, and every time, like she said, he's hanging upside down, reading a book, quoting yep. something. Like, yep. I, told them, I told them to him, like, bro, y'all was doing inclusion before inclusion was cool, bro. Yeah. Like, and they were like, like, yes. Like, oh, man, they I'm sorry. I'm looking at a few of these, and I, I feel like I feel like we is. I feel like as much as they touched us, like emotionally, I think we did the same to them. Yeah, well, we hope. I, 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 hey, I hope. Yeah. We so hope. Yeah, yeah, yo, yo, lay. I'm with you like this. Yeah, for real. Because yeah. not I, you can you can ask Cap when I took the picture with this man right here. I was in your position. <laughs> I can only imagine. Yo, I was in your position. I know how you feel. The paper yeah. Like that. yeah, I know how you feel right now. That's crazy. And you know what? something, cat. Uh, you know something, Lay. Yeah. You did a good fucking job tonight, bro. Uh, yeah, bro. Bro, my man, my you. man whipped out the whole catalog. They were like, you know that? <laughs> you know, man. Like, how the fuck you know that? that, that I'm confident in y'all, B. I, I knew y'all would. When I, when I, I realized would. what they have all done, both of them, both, both, both partners, I was like, wait, do I literally see you writing my whole life? Like, I literally went from to X Men and then beyond, and it was like I, I just I gotta say, it. I literally yeah. grew up with you as you wrote in your years. So it was just, yeah, it was a moment, right? Yeah, yeah, bro, beautiful moment. Yeah, thank I've you, been fellas. Yeah, uh, it, it, it was a very beautiful moment, man. I appreciated what happened, uh, and I'm so happy crazy. I was on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I am go, happy you was on also. Yeah, man. Let's go, Lay, and, yeah, bro. And, and like crazy. I said. Plenty more to come, bro. Oh, yeah. 2023 is going to be our fucking year, whether they likes it or not. Oh, and with Yo. a tear in my eye, it's your friendly neighborhood knuckleheads Yo. signing out. Peace, everybody. My bad for cutting you off, show. No, no, no. You don't cut me off. 